morning say hi hi it's friends say hi put some comments in that'd be great let me know you can hear can you hear me okay good morning emperor how are you morning sophie morning Enrisha. tammy boo don yeah you can hear me that's awesome and we're ready to deliver another lesson for you so if you put some, if you double tap the screen, give me some likes. That'll sh that'll encourage more viewers um, to to join us. And make sure you share this live as well. It's got loads of people. Let me have loads of people this morning to prepare for the theory test and make some of the stuff just easy for you, because some of the stuff is really easy as soon as somebody explains things to you. It becomes easy and simple to understand. That's what I want to do here. It's snowing, is it? Where are you? I don't even know what the weather's like here. I've not even looked outside yet. Been busy. Well, I'm sure it's not snowing. I'd have noticed that. Snowing in Ireland, is it? Do you like the snow? I do like it when it snows. And everyone's got to just stay at home, getting cozied up. Then a couple of days later, it can be a bit of a nuisance. But yeah, I do like it. I do like the snow. Lucky. <laughs> So anybody preparing for a theory test, let me know. And I'll pass my theory with your help and still watch your lives. Coley, that's awesome. I had a few messages like that last night um, from people saying, yeah, I still watch even though I've passed. Thank you. And Marie, is that Anne? Oh, Amy Marie, sorry, I passed my theory. Yay, congratulations. You don't need me then, do you here? So share my life, that'd be awesome. Uh, that's what I'm aiming to do. Uh, what I'm aiming to do is make theory easier. Louise, next week, so you've got plenty of time to study. Are you prepared? What are you using? I'll just, um, I'll just as a reminder, I'll just pin my course, add the link to my course, first of all, to this live, and pin it there for people to see. I do these lives to help you, um, but um, I... I um, I have this course, you know, if, you, if you're one of the people that are failing, you've failed it once, twice, multiple times, failing it by one or two marks, then this course will really help you. Um, it'll help you get through it next time. Oh, you failed 12, 12 times by one point. Oh, no. Princess um, Nels is that. Pass next time. Honestly, go through this course and you will pass next time. And you will be one of the people that's sending me a message like. Let me show you a message I got last night. Um, where is it? There you go. Your thank you for your support with TikToks and the courses I passed today, twenty third of February. The course is amazing and really does help and guide you through your through your course. Everything in the course has helped. And then I got this. Is that the same one? Oh no, that was from Scott. This one's from Amy. Hello, I know you probably won't see this, but I want to thank you because your lives, videos, helped me pass today, and I'm really, really grateful. That's two two emails that I got just last night, um, and that's what I want to do. I want to help people. You pass, you struggle, you scared for the hazard perception. Oh no, have you done lots of practice? What are you, what are you scoring on most of your hazard perception clips? Are you scoring, are you failing them? Are you scoring threes, twos, ones, fives? What do you score on most of them? Morning, Bambi Lee, how are you? You're missing by two seconds. What does, does that mean you're too early or does that mean you're too late? So it's hard for me to answer, to help unless I know what, um, exactly what you are struggling with. Are you... It's 9 a.m. Too early. Molly, that's not a problem. You're not supposed to only click once. You're supposed to click more than once, okay? So click when you think it's going to be a hazard. Click again when you know it's a hazard. And click again as one more click for luck. And then you'll get it. You'll, you'll get a, um, there'll be a mark just before where you're supposed to score. And then there'll be a couple of marks where you are supposed to score and you'll be fine, okay? So when you're doing your hazard perception, don't just click once for a hazard. Don't click hundreds of times, but don't only click once. Make sure you click. Um, clicking when you think it's going to be a hazard. So you see a child about to do this and you think, oh, it's going to step out in front of me, click. The child steps out in front of you, click again. The child's all the way in front of you, one more click for luck. So click at least three times for each hazard. This afternoon, Joseph, good luck for this afternoon. Is it your first time watching me? 
Let me know who is watching me for the first time. Lots of people. That's awesome. Congratulations. You've seen me a lot. Some of you have seen me a lot. I know that. I recognise your names. But some of you watch me for the very first time, which is brilliant. Hello and welcome. You might not even know who I am and what I'm doing here, but um, let me tell you who I am, shall I? Yes and last. Okay, thank you for commenting then. <laughs> um, yeah, um, so... My daughter's birthday was fine. Thank you. I couldn't come on last night. Suddenly, last minute. Husband stuck on the motorway um, on the M6 and I had to go and get my dog. Then I had to sort my daughter out. So I couldn't come on last night. Um, thank you, Dawn. Um, but I, my name is Annie. If you don't know me already, my name is Annie. Let, while, I'm, um, while I'm introducing myself, tell me where you're watching me from. So put your names, your comments in, tell me where you are in the country. I'm an ADI, that means I'm an approved driving instructor. Um, I've been a grade A instructor for about 10 years. I'm also an, an audit registered trainer. Hi from London and Newcastle and Bristol and Guernsey and South Yorkshire, Aden and Leeds and Glasgow and Sheffield. Willerton is that? Uh, Petersburg. You're from London and you're cooking. Were you cooking last time, Ian? as well? Netherlands, Bradford, Gloucester, Essex, Droitwich. Hi, thank you for joining me this morning. I'm from um, Cheshire. Do we do automatic lessons? Yes, we do. Um, hi from Somerset and Dublin and Wolverhampton and Oldham. All from, people from all over. You're not, you're not understanding English. You, um, I, yeah, okay. I don't... The only way I can think I say about that is you have to take the test in English and listening to me. Um, listening to these lives, following my TikTok account. Make sure you follow me on TikTok. Follow my YouTube account. You can do that by clicking on this link. All of that stuff will help you. But my course um, in this link as well will help you because you can listen and watch again and again and again. Um, I'm also a theory test expert. And that's what I'm doing here this morning. I am helping you to, to pass your theory test. I'm making theory easy for you. Good luck for Chloe for today. Um, thank you, it's Franz. Um, I'm a theory test expert. I created this course um, to help you to pass your theory test because so many people were telling me they were struggling. I started to do face-to-face um, -face lessons, classroom-based lessons and one-to-one -one lessons and then I created this course um, and it's got in it worksheets and video tutorials it's got everything you need it's got loads and loads of stuff to help you to learn and then it's got all the theory questions to practice with and mock tests to practice etc etc so everything in it is uh, worth 69.95 I'm selling it this morning only 34.99 only the price of one single one hour driving lesson um, and you will be 100% prepared to pass I've just shared a couple of um Scott, <laughs> this is yours. Hello, Scott. I've just I've just um, been through this and screenshotted some of it, Scott. Um, and yes, I saw that other thing out later. Thank you. Um, so Scott, who's just on here, said, um, thank you for your support with TikTok and the courses. Um, he passed 23rd of February. The course is amazing. OK, so that, that's what Scott said. Everything in the course helped. And this is how long is it? It's as long as you want to take. It's all online. So you can do it in a week, you can do it in four weeks, you can do it in eight weeks, it's entirely up to you. It can be done in a week, apparently. Lots of people have. Um, let's get on to a question, shall we? So does anybody know what does this sign mean? Let me know in the comments. What does this sign mean? Put lots and lots of comments in. If you don't know, put IDK. I'll go through it with you. It's one that lots of people are getting mixed up with exactly what it means. So let me just go and charge this up. Lots of people getting mixed up with exactly what it means. Um, and when you see other signs together, it makes it super easy. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you this sign and the other signs that you're getting mixed up with. So I'm showing you this sign at the moment. Some good answers coming in. You've all got a good idea of what it means. We've all got a good idea, 
but I'm going to help you know exactly what it means. Okay, so the sign, what people are getting mixed up with, but so give me some likes guys, that'd be awesome. Um, like I say, all, everything I teach you is in this course here. So have a look at it while I'm going through this. So people are getting mixed up between this sign and this sign and this sign. They're all, they're all warning signs. You know the warning signs because they've been a triangle and triangle shaped signs are warning signs. You can easily remember that. If you make a triangle shape with your hands, open your thumbs out and you've got the shape of a W for warning. Triangle signs are warning signs. Just do that and it'll help you to remember. So this sign is warning you about something. And if you notice, this sign has got two lanes. There's two lanes of traffic and then the, the road goes narrower, and then there's still two lanes of traffic, okay? So this sign is warning you that the road is going to get narrower on both sides. Look at the difference between that sign and this sign. This sign is warning you that the road is gonna get narrower on one side, okay? The road's going to get narrower on both sides. The road's going to get narrower on one side. Now that what a lot of people think this sign means end of dual carriageway and it doesn't. This sign has got two lanes going into two lanes. Can you see that? Double tap the screen if you can see. <laughs> That's the tarot reading. No, it's not. Can you see that it's the road narrows on both sides? This sign means the dual end of dual carriageway. You've got two lanes going into one lane. Yes, yeah, for driving. Can you see the difference? Two lanes getting narrower, so road narrows on both sides. Two lanes that end up being one lane. So you've got two lanes into one. So road narrows on both sides, dual carriageway ends. You always get it wrong and it's probably because you haven't seen them both together and think, oh yeah, isn't it super easy now? Isn't it easy now? That Now that someone's shown you them together. And the other one is this one. The, oh, I've just dropped it. I'm always dropping things in these lives. Okay, so this one is the road narrows on one side. Okay, does that make sense? So now put your answers in again. What does this sign mean? Does it mean end of dual carriageway, A, or road narrows on both sides, B? A or B, or you can type the answer in if you want to. Does it mean end of dual carriageway or road narrows on both sides? And how was that for you? Awesome, it means road narrows on both sides. If you've only just joined, um, let me just show you the difference. Road narrows on both sides, two lanes, the lanes go inwards towards each other and there's still two lanes. End of dual carriageway, two lanes, the roads go in towards each other and you end up with one lane, end of dual carriageway. Yeah, can you see the difference now? Let me know, D double tap the screen just to let me know that that has helped you because that's a sign that so many people get wrong and it's a sign that is so really, really easy once you know, once somebody's explained it to you. Don't forget to follow me, don't forget to share this live, follow me on TikTok, you can click on this link to subscribe to my YouTube channel because all my lives this week will be going into my YouTube channel. So everything I cover in my live, you can see um, what I covered yesterday, you'll be able to see in that YouTube channel. Thanks for following me and sharing um, and giving me all these likes, it's awesome. I want to go through another question. Now, I did go through this yesterday, so if you watched yesterday, I'm sorry, but there's so many people get mixed up that I really want to um, cover it again and again and again. Um, yeah, so you're absolutely right. Road narrows on both sides, well done. You've got two lanes, they get narrower and you end up with two lanes, road narrows on both sides. Two lanes, the roads na narrow and you end up with one lane, it would be end of motorway. When I'm alive today, I'm live today now till half past 11 and I'm live today at half past six tonight. Cool. So whoever struggles with 
signaling at roundabouts or questions about signaling at roundabouts just put some me's or yeses in the comments and let me know so some still some people just popping on and answering that yeah awesome and who's watching me for the first time just put a yes if you're watching me for the first time or if you haven't seen my roundabouts lesson where, <clears throat> where I show you my diagram. Just put a yes if it's your first time or you haven't seen it. Because I want to know, that I, I want to know I'm not telling every, all the same people. What, you're not coming on at three or four o'clock. I am, I can't, I've got a hair appointment. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've got a hair, and I've tried to work it out so I could come on, um, but I don't think I have. I don't think I can come on. You've seen, oh, I'm sorry, Sadie. Well, I'm gonna go through it again. It'll only take a couple of minutes. Um, triangle, yeah, triangle signs are warning signs. It's really useful to know. Circle signs are orders. Make a circle with your hand, see the shape of an O for order. So it's super easy. Come on at the hairdressers. <laughs> I don't know how my hairdresser would feel about that. Okay, um, what signal should you give when you're going straight ahead at a roundabout, it'd be good multitasking there, wouldn't it? What signal should you give when you're going straight ahead at a roundabout? So please, uh, I'll do traffic lights later. Please put your answer in, and if you don't know, put IDK. So you, should you signal left before leaving the roundabout? Don't signal at any time. Signal right when you're approaching the roundabout. Signal left when you're approaching the roundabout. Circle for orders, yeah, absolutely. Really, really remember helps you. Um, circle signs, circle signs are all orders. Make a circle with your hands in the shape of an O for order. Red ones, don't do it. Red for danger, blue, do it, must do. Anyway, pop, pop your answers in. You got it in your test, did you, Scott? Awesome. And I bet you got it right. Oh no, Connor, I'm sorry to hear that. Stay with me, stay with me. Keep watching my live, follow me on TikTok. I'm here to help you. Okay, so let's talk about roundabouts because people are getting mixed up. Um, <laughs> hi, Kevin, thank you. So we've got some A's, C's and D's and I think I've seen some B's in there as well. Good luck for today, Tarek. So let me talk to you about roundabouts. I'll put a picture of a roundabout above me, but I'm going to use my diagram as well to help. So that when you're thinking about signaling to do with roundabouts, there are two different signals you need to know about. First, what signal do I give when I'm driving towards the roundabout? And then what signal do I give when I'm coming off the roundabout? Okay, so two different signals. Does that make sense? Put a Y in the comments if that makes sense, because there's always people saying yes, but, and I'm going to talk about two different signals. Put a Y for yes in the comments. Um, the letter Y for yes in the comments. If you understand, there are two signals you need to know about when signaling at roundabouts. You need to know what signal to give when you're driving towards the roundabout and what signal to give. Lots of people say that. I don't even know what she looks like. Look, what signal to give when you're coming off the roundabout. Okay, makes sense? Awesome. Let me explain them. First signal I'm going to talk about is what signal should you give when you're driving towards the roundabout? When you're driving towards a roundabout, you, if you're going to go left, this is a red car driving towards this roundabout with one, two, three exits, left, ahead and right. <clears throat> so if this red car was going to go left, it would signal left on the approach to the roundabout, obviously. If this signal was, if this car, red car, was going to go down the third exit, which would be right, what signal would it give as it was approaching the roundabout? Just put the first letter if you want to, if you can't be bothered writing the full word in. If this car was going right, what signal would it give when it was approaching the roundabout, if it was going right? 
it would signal right. Well done. Okay, brilliant. Obvious, isn't it? If this car was going straight ahead, it wouldn't give any signal on the approach to the roundabout. Just the same as if this car was at a crossroads. Just the same, when it's approaching a crossroads, it would be exactly the same as if it was approaching a roundabout. If it was going left, it would signal left now. If it was going right, it would signal right now. If it was going ahead, it wouldn't signal because there is no signal to say we're going ahead. Now, some people say, well, how will other people know which way you're going? They'll know which way you're going because you're not signaling. Does that make sense? If you're going left, you signal left. If you're going right, you signal right. If you're not signaling, that means I'm going ahead. Does that make sense? Let me know. Then I'll talk about the other signal you need to know. So it is super easy when you think about it like that. Double tap the screen, give me loads of likes. And if you remember, if, if that makes some sense to you, then please let me know. It's obvious to some people, not to most people, some people think you always have to signal when you're approaching a roundabout. So let me know, does that make sense? Give me loads of likes. Does that make sense? Thank you, King Burke. Let's keep on, yep, yeah, that makes sense, brilliant. Now, let's talk about signaling to come off a roundabout. Let's talk about signaling, all of this is in this course. All of this information is in my course. Let's talk about signaling to come off a roundabout. The rule is you always signal to come off a roundabout. Which way would you signal if you were going to come off a roundabout, guys? Would it be left or right? Just, have, just picture driving around a roundabout. Which way do we always come off a roundabout? Just have a look at the course here, Cathy. You can see it. I'll talk about it later. Absolutely, guys, you're always going to signal left to come off a roundabout. So let's look at this roundabout again. If you were going left, you would be signalling as you were approaching it. If you were going ahead, you wouldn't signal on the approach, and then you'd signal left when you get to here, just as you're passing the exit before yours. If you were going right, you'd be signalling right on the approach, then you'd signal left just as you're passing the exit before yours. So you're always gonna tell people, I'm coming off the roundabout. And you're going to tell them in good time. And in good time means not too early and not too late. So just as you're passing exit one, signal to go down exit two. Just as you're passing exit two, you can signal to go down exit three. Just the same, as if those exit, if that road, that roundabout was made into a straight road, exit one, exit two, exit three. If you're going down exit one, you'd be signalling here. If you're going down exit two, you start signalling left as you pass exit one. If you're going down exit three, you start signalling signaling left just as you pass exit two. So you always signal left as you pass the exit before the one you want to take. Does that make sense? So two different signals I've just explained to you. Does that make sense? Let me know. Give me some yeses. Thank you, Nixon. If I've missed some gifts, I'm sorry. Um, it's hard to see them all when I'm teaching and there's a lot of you on here. That makes sense. Fantastic. So the next thing we're going to do with this question is get rid of two rubbish answers because when you're answering theory test questions, there's quite often some answers that are absolute rubbish. And the rubbish ones here are, the question is, what signal should you give when you're going straight ahead at a roundabout? And don't signal at any time is rubbish because of course you've got to signal to tell people what you're doing. Signal left when you're approaching the roundabout is rubbish. If you signal left when you're driving towards a roundabout, that means you're going left. And that means anybody that's coming out of here might come out and you'd crash into them. OK, so potentially, of course. So you're not going to signal down a road that you're not going down. So we get rid of those two. I'm only left with two possible options. 
So what signal, signal should you give when you're going straight ahead at a roundabout? Now put the answer in the comments and then double tap the screen if I've helped you. Kelsey, I've given you two different signals. Have you heard it all in my lesson? Have you, I, can't, I can't keep repeating, I'm sorry, it'll be on another day. But if you had all the lesson, I've given you two different signals, one for approaching the roundabout and one for coming off the roundabout. So what's the right answer here? Is it A or is it C? What signal should you give when you're going straight ahead at a roundabout? So loads of great answers coming in. Well done. Some people still getting mixed up. You're going straight ahead. Think about the roundabout as if it's a crossroads. What signal is for straight ahead at a crossroads? What signal means straight ahead? No, not, not, there isn't a signal. There is no signal to say I'm going straight ahead. The same at a roundabout. There is no signal to say I'm going straight ahead. So not signalling means you're going straight ahead. So what's the right answer here? Is it A, signal left before leaving the roundabout? Or C, signal right when you're approaching the roundabout if you're going straight ahead? Thank you. So absolutely, it's A, signal left before leaving the roundabout. That's the right answer to this question. You do not signal right if you're going straight ahead. Why would you do that? Think about it. Cool. Okay, next question to do with roundabouts. How should you signal if you're going straight ahead at a roundabout? So a very similar question, some different options, options for answers. How should you signal if you're going straight ahead at a roundabout? Let's get rid of loads of misconceptions here because so many people are thinking the wrong thing. You're going straight ahead at a roundabout. Do you signal right on the approach and then left to leave the roundabout? Or do you signal left after you leave the roundabout and enter a new road? Or do you signal right on the approach to the roundabout and keep the signal on? Or do you signal left just after you pass the exit that before the one you want to take? Do you know the answer? Give me some answers then, double tap the screen, let me know. The course is there, pinned so you can have a look at it for the person that's asking me. So what is the right answer? Is it A, B, C or D? OK, let me go through it again with you, because I think some people haven't heard it and read it. And, and, and also you, you, um, you maybe have some embedded thoughts in your in your mind. OK, what signal? Let's change the question. Let's change the question slightly because it'd be the same answer. What signal should you give when you're going straight ahead at a crossroads? What signal should you give when you're going straight ahead at a crossroads? Would it be left right or none put the answer in the comments what signal should you give if you're going straight ahead at a crossroads no signal fantastic because there isn't a signal that says i'm going straight ahead is there? so no signal now it's exactly the same answer what signal should you give when you're going straight ahead at a roundabout is it which one of these is the answer is it signal right on the approach, signal left after you leave, signal right on the approach, or signal left after you pass the exit before the one you want to take? Thank you, Ben. Thank you for the likes. I can see them flying up the screen, the hearts flying up the screen. Fantastic. Okay, so lots more great answers coming in now. The answer is signal left after you pass the exit before the one you want to take. So you're going ahead. This car's going ahead. Do not signal. When you get to here, after you're passing exit one, signal left to say I'm coming off the roundabout, I'm going down exit two. Okay, so signal left just after you pass the exit before the one you want to take is the correct answer. 
Now, what I want you to get into your head is a two really, really, really simple concepts. One is if you're going straight ahead, you do not signal. That is not a signal to say I'm going straight ahead. If you're signaling right, you're telling people you're going right. You would get points or fail your driving test. If you're signaling right, you're saying I'm going right and you're not going right if you're going ahead. Um, if, you, if it's three lane roundabout, a five lane roundabout is exactly the same rule. Straight ahead is all straight ahead is always the junction that's opposite you. If the junctions are here or here or here, they would be right. Okay, so the, the, ahead is always straight up in front of you. Cool, and then you always signal left after you pass the exit before the one you want to take. If you see that as an answer, it's going to be correct because you always do that on a roundabout. My name is Annie, I'm making theory easy for you. Let me know if this is your first time watching me. So I need to know whether, whether, whether I need to tell you who I am, what I'm doing here. Um, give me some likes. I'm gonna give you loads of help this morning. I'm covering loads of bits and pieces to help you to pass your test. I've already covered signs, I've covered roundabouts. I'm going to be covering, I've got a bit of paper here and I can't get it out. I'm going to be covering arm signals because so many people are getting this question wrong and it's super easy when it's explained it to you. Contraflow systems, box junctions, speed limits and crossings. That's everything I'm covering this morning. Um, you're working at the same time, Bambini. Thank you, Scott. Okay, so it's your first time watching. Yes, lots of people say it's the first time watching me. Welcome, thank you for watching. Make sure you're following me on um, TikTok. You can click on this link to have a look at my course. Um, I'm Annie, I'm an ADI. That means I'm an approved driving instructor. I have been an approved driving instructor for about 10 years, um, a grade A instructor. I'm also an audit trainer. That means I train people to become driving instructors. Um, I'm on the audit register, official register for driving instructor trainers, that means. I'm also a theory test expert. So what I'm doing here today is I'm making theory easy for you. I've created a course to help you pass your theory test. And I'm showing some, some bits and pieces from the course in these lives. The course was awarded Most Innovative Driving School. Um, I've been awarded Superior Achievement and Excellence. I've, um, the driver and the DVSA have looked at my courses and have given me all of the theory questions. And this is a message I received last night um, that said, thank you for your support with TikToks and the courses. I passed today, which is the 23rd of February. Um, the course is amazing and really does help and guide you through everything in the course has helped. That is this course here. This course will guide you through step by step and how exactly to pass your theory test. But now I want to share with you arm signals. I want to share arm signals to help you. So have a look, have a look at this question and pop your answer in there. What does this arm signal mean? So put A, B, C or D. On put I, D, K if you don't know. And I, I need you to give, put the answers in because if every single person knows the answer, then I don't need to go through the lesson if everybody on here knows it. So does it mean the driver intends to turn right, the driver intends to turn left, the driver intends to slow down, or the driver wants to keep you back? What does this sign mean? Okay, so we've got some different answers coming in, which means that I will go through this lesson with you. It won't take long. If you already know the arm signals, this one won't take long. But let me go through the lesson. And in the two, three minutes, you'll always get it right. Who says I always get it wrong? You will always be getting it right, JD, after this one, after this lesson. Okay, because it's really simple. First of all, I want you to understand why do we have to answer these questions about arm signals? I've been driving 36 years. I have never used arm signals ever. And I've very, very rarely seen them. But when you indicate left or right, your indicator lights will flash, won't they? Put some yeses in the comments or a Y for yes if you agree. That when you indicate left or right, your indicator lights flash at the front and at the back of your car. Awesome. I need you to interact with me throughout the whole of this lesson. Cool. Also, when you press the brake pedal, your brake lights will light up at the back of your car. Some thumbs up or some yeses if you get that. Cool. 
Now, if you're on a journey and you realize that your indicator lights have stopped working or your brake lights have stopped working or you're driving to a garage to get them fixed, you can't tell other people, other road users, what you intend to do. If your brake lights or indicators are not working, you can't tell people what, that you're going to turn left, that you're going to slow down, that you're going to um, turn right. So you need to use arm signals. One for turning left, one for turning right, and one for slowing down. That means there are three arm signals that you need to know, okay? There's three arm signals that you need to know, not four, there's three of them. So get that in your head first of all. Left, right, and slowing down. And they are incredibly easy when somebody's gone through them with you. Okay, so if you're going to tell people you're turning right, all you're going to do is put your right arm out of the window. All you're going to do is put your right arm out of the window if you're turning right, okay? So do that and then put the letter D for done. Doesn't matter who's watching you. Just put your right arm out, pretend you're on a bicycle because that's what you do, um, or type the words in, uh, Ill Ace has, said, um, has done that, yeah. Right arm out means I'm turning right. Do, do, if you agree that that is like super easy, double tap the screen. Because there's only three to learn. You know one of them already. There's only two more to learn and you know you can learn them. The problem is you haven't, probably haven't tried to learn them. You probably just tried to memorise answers to questions and not thought, right, okay, let's spend five minutes learning this. Cool. Wow. Okay, so the next one I want to teach you is left. Now, left, you're always going to use your right arm because you can't put your left arm out of the window. It's too far away, isn't it? It's too far away. So you're always using your right arm for all of the signals. So left, you put your right arm out of the window and you do forward circles. Forward circles as if you're trying to point over towards the left of the car. So forward circles, nice and neat like this, as big as you can, as if you're trying to point over towards the left. Look at these arrows here, they're going around in a circle. So do that, put D for done, double tap the screen if you now know right and left. Right and circles for left. Do it, say it out loud, tell yourself what you're doing. It's right for right, circles for left. Yeah, awesome. Keep doing that, keep double tapping that screen, brilliant. Now the third one you need to know is if your brake lights aren't working, you need to tell people that you're slowing down. This is really, really easy. Slowing down is up and down. Up and down is slowing down. Up and down is slowing down. Do it and say it, even if you have to do little things like this to remind yourself, because um, you've got people with you. Up and down is slowing down. Awesome. Isn't that easy? Right is just right. Slowing down is up and down for slowing down. And left is circles. So let's come back to this question. This arm is going round in circles. This is the one that people get mixed up with. What does it mean? The driver intends to turn right. The driver intends to turn left. The driver intends to slow down. The driver wants to keep you back. Now, before we put the answer in, there's one of these answers that is rubbish, absolute and utter rubbish. It is not an arm signal. Can anybody tell me what, which one of those is rubbish? and is not an arm signal at all. It is, absolutely, D is absolute rubbish. D is not an arm signal. The driver wants to keep you back is not an arm signal. So why is it there? Why have they put that, that writing there? Can, does anybody know? Why have they put that if it's not even an option? because some people are getting mixed up with this. It's not to trick you. It's not to trick you, it's not to throw you off. It's not to confuse you. No, 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 it's not, honestly, I promise you. I promise you. 
Okay, so in your theory test, how many options are there always? How many options are there always? There's always four options, Sadie. This, I am, it's okay. There's, oh, there's always four options, guys. Okay, so they have to just make one up because there isn't a fourth option. They have to just make one up, okay? And it's the same if you get four pictures. One of the pictures will be a picture that doesn't make any sense. OK, so they have to give you four options. Otherwise, it's it, it, it's always four options. OK, let's get rid of that option. That doesn't mean anything. Now, what is the right answer? What arms? What does this arm signal mean? Pop your answer in. I'm just going to get my um, thing over here. Great answers coming in. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. The answer is, oh, the answer is B, the driver intends to turn left. Fantastic. That's my easy arm signals to help you because so, why wouldn't you use your indicator? You would. Sh sh shut up, um, XXD. These, you have to know these. If your um, brake lights or your indicators are broken and you're going to drive to a garage to get them fixed, you need, you'll need to use arm signals. It's probably never going to happen. You also have to know in your theory test um, how, how to cope if you're, if you're breaking down on a motorway. That's never happened to me either. Um, or how to go do CPR um, and to save somebody's life. That's never happened to me. But you need to know these things just in case. So, you, of course, you would use your indicator. But if it was broken, you'd need to have a way of telling people what you're doing. Um, you might be halfway through a journey and they stop working. Or you might be on your way to get the car fixed and you need to tell people. Does that one make sense? Up and down is slowing down. Awesome. Up and down is slowing down. My name's Annie. I'm an ADI. Where are you watching me from? Do you have a theory test coming up? Let me know. Put some comments in. I've been a grade A in driving instructor for 10 years. I have a driving school and I'm based in Nutsford and Northwich in Cheshire. Um, I do these lives for you before I go out and do um, lessons. Um, and I do these lives for you when I get home from my lessons as well at the moment. Um, you can pick, click on this link to sign up for my course. You can click on this link to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Robert, that's awesome, congratulations. I'm also an audit trainer, hi from Nottingham. Uh, was that Jamie or something? Was that? I can't find, can't find it. it. Disappeared already. Uh, hi from Basingstoke and Luton and Birmingham. How are you? I'm an audit trainer. That means I'm on the official register for driving instructor trainers. I'm an, I, and I'm a theory test expert. This live will finish at about half past eleven. I'll be back on tonight at about half past six. I've created a course to give you a step-by-step -step process and to include absolutely everything that you need in order to pass your theory test. This course has got worksheets, tutorials, fact lists, all to help you learn, first of all. And then it's got all the official questions. It's got mock tests. It's got mini mock tests. It's got case studies. It's got everything that you need in order to pass your theory test. It's only £34.99 while I'm live. While I'm live, you're getting $69.95 worth of products for $34.99 and you'll be 100% prepared to pass when you go all the way through it. Now, what I, what I want to go through now is my go with the flow lesson. Do you have case studies? Yes, there are case studies. The official DVSA um, practice case studies are in my course. There's games as well that help you with the case studies and help you with road signs. Okie dokie, so whoever struggles with contra flow questions, let me know, just Queen B, good luck. Whoever struggles with contra flow questions, just let me know because I can make it, Lauren, I can make it really, really easy for you. You don't anymore, Scott, do you? <laughs> you know all this now. Um, nice to have you on here, even though you don't need to be. Butterfly, yay, you passed. Okay, so let's go through it with you. Go through this lesson. And by the end of this lesson, you will never struggle with contraflows again because you'll properly understand them. Okay, so what does this sign mean? Does it mean with flow bus lane or contraflow bus lane? 
let me know what do you think this sign means no I don't cover London I'm in Cheshire so is this a with flow or a contra flow bus lane sign or IDK if you don't know put the letters I D K for I don't know if you've no idea what this sign means then I know how many people know it, how many people don't know it. When I've been delivering this lesson for so many, um, for so long, maybe everyone will say I know it. Oh, Rabs, yay. Thank you for getting popping on and letting me know. That's awesome. You're really struggling with your theory. Well, Rabs has just said that they've passed through watching these lives. Scott has passed by watching these lives and going through my course. What help, Hina, do you think that you need? Other people have passed by going through my course and having a one-to-one -one with, with, um, with Chris Benstead. What help do you think you need? So, so um, yeah, have a, have a think about it. Click on the link to have a look at my course. Okay, so let's go through ContraFlow bus lane and let you know exactly what is a contraflow bus lane and then you can be able to answer questions about bus lanes super easily so the word contra means against so pop just put um just put a c the letter c for contra if you understand what i've just said just this slide if you understand thank you alan do you understand this slide only, that the word contra means against? Just put a C for contra. Cool. I want to know you're with me. I want to know you're joining in with me. When lots and lots and lots of people um, contradict the direction. Really good. I don't go into too much of that because lots of people wouldn't understand it. But yeah, well done. Lots of people would as well. Awesome. Okay. Fantastic. So the word flow refers to the movement of traffic so this red car is flowing in this direction and so is this green car they're both flowing in that direction so flow simply refers to the movement of traffic i'm guessing my car's ready i like to i like to have props for this one it just helps you to see what i'm talking about okay does that make sense put an f for flow if you now know that contra flow means against the flow just put an f for flow if you now know that contra flow you don't have to understand what it is yet because i will tell you I'll, I'll, I'll explain it more to you i've covered i've covered um uh has a perception already this week and it's all in my youtube account so click on this link and you'll see it good an f for flow brilliant now Put a number one, if you understand that you will find contra flows in busy towns on one-way streets. They'll be on one-way streets. So all the on one-way streets is when all the lanes are going in the same direction, okay? But that's where you'll find a contra flow. Put a one in the comments if that makes some sense to you. Why do they have contra flows? I'll explain that in a second. You'll probably possibly understand it in a second. Keep giving me some likes because that'll be awesome for, you to, for me to see. Now, let me show you an example. This is a one-way street. It's got three lanes. It's got one lane and there's a red car in it and the red car is flowing in this direction. It's got the middle lane. It's got a blue car in it and the blue car is also flowing in this direction. There's also a bus in one lane and the bus is also flowing in that direction. Put a yes if that makes sense or the letter Y for yes. If you can see that all there's, there's a one way street, there are three lanes and all of the vehicles are flowing in that direction. You get that. Fantastic. Brilliant. OK, let's move on to the next slide. Look at the bus now. Now this is showing you three lanes. The red car is flowing in this direction. The blue car is also flowing in this direction. Flow refers to the movement of traffic. Yes, but the bus, the bus is actually flowing in that direction. Can you see that? Can you see that? You can pass next time. Go through this course. Keep watching me. I'm here 
pretty much every day to help you. Cool, you can see that. Why is why do they have them? I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, this might be an image you might see of a contraflow bus lane. Look, there's an orange car flowing up the road. There's a blue car flowing up the road and there's a the lane for buses and the arrow is saying that buses would be flowing down the road. Okay, there are three lanes on a one-way street, but the buses will be flowing against, um, going against the flow. This is, um, thank you, Alan. This is a, a sign, this sign, for, this is a sign for this road, okay? The sign is saying, showing you, there are three lanes, one lane for buses, and the buses will be flowing down the road, and two lanes for other traffic that would be flowing up the road. This is a contraflow bus lane sign. The bus would be going against the flow. So the traffic, the bus can keep on moving. It's not got other traffic in front of it. Buses have got loads and loads of people on them, haven't they? All those people is trying to get to where they're going. The, the, the bus driver doesn't want to be stuck behind other traffic. So the bus can keep on going if it's got a lane for itself and it's going in a different direction. Cool. Does that make sense? That's the contraflow bus lane sign. Does that make sense? Are these common? Yeah, in certain areas, Tom. But in other areas, there wouldn't be. Um, they're not, not where I live. Fantastic. This is another sign for bus, another bus sign. Remember, it's an information sign. It's a blue rectangle. So it's an information. And it's telling you that there are two towns and big cities, Scott Biddle says. Yes, you'll find them in towns and big cities. Thanks, Scott. So this sign is telling you that there are two lanes. One lane is for buses, but bicycles can use this lane as well. And the other lane is for other vehicles, but there are no arrows on this sign. The bus would be flowing up the road and the other vehicles would be flowing up the road as well. So this is the difference. A contraflow bus lane sign has got arrows on it a with flow bus lane sign doesn't have arrows on it. Why do you think a with flow bus lane sign doesn't have arrows on it? Can you answer that question? Why doesn't a with flow sign, it makes sense now, I know it does when someone goes through it, no arrows equals with flow. God. <clears throat> because the traffic is good. Excuse me. Cool. cool. I'll read kitties because they're all going in the same direction. Absolutely. Why do they need arrows to say, guys, you're all going that way. You're all driving in the normal direction. Why do you need arrows for that? OK, you only need arrows if something odd is happening and the contraflow is odd because the bus is going to be going against the flow. So does that make some sense? So people are getting mixed up between these two signs and it's super easy, isn't it? If there's no arrows, it's with flow. If it's contraflow, if there's arrows, it's contraflow because a with flow doesn't need arrows on it. So let's go through this. What does El Ellie Oh my gosh, I'm really happy to see that to see you pop on to let me know. Thank you. Oh, it gives me a buzz every day when people are popping on to say I've passed. I know you knew this, Scott. Okay, so is this a with flow bus lane sign or a contra flow bus lane sign? Just put A or B. Let me know. A or B. Is it with flow or is it contra flow? You know the answer now. You know the answer. Just for those of you who haven't seen it, I'll just recap very, very quickly. This picture is showing you a one-way street with three lanes. The red car is flowing in that direction. The blue car is flowing, also flowing in that direction. And the bus is also flowing in that direction. These vehicles are all going in the same direction. So this bus is a with flow bus lane sign vickering awesome this picture is showing you a red car that is flowing in this direction a blue car that is also flowing in this direction but the bus is flowing against the flow the bus is, is a contra flow bus lane um, 
when the bus is going the opposite way, it's called against the flow of traffic. Just put my bits and pieces back. So this sign is this sign is a contraflow bus lane sign. Well done, guys. Thank you for the road. I, I, I say official, official. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is a this is a contraflow bus lane sign. Um, I'm trying. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make it easy for you. Um, 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 yeah, making theory easy is what I want to do for you because it is a lot of it is when somebody explains it to you. Now you know. Now you will always know, won't you? Just double tap the screen for me, guys. If you will always know that, let's go back to this particular slide, you will always know there's a contra flow sign has arrows and a with flow sign doesn't have arrows because it doesn't need arrows. Why would it have arrows if you're all going in the same direction? You always overthink the answer, I know. And it's because you haven't been taught it. You've just been shown question and answer. And that's not what I do in my course. I teach you first. I teach you first. So you've got a video tutorial on contraflows and with flows. You'll see these signs and you'll get it straight away. It takes a bit longer in these lives because we're all interactive. It's like you're in the classroom with me uh, and I love it. If I'm if I'm getting the comments and doesn't feel like I'm talking to myself, then I, I love it. I love helping you. So that is my uh, go with the flow lesson. Um, road signs I did yesterday, um, and I will do them again next time. I'm doing um, I'm showing my course. So I'll do road signs again very very soon, and I've got something to share with you with road signs as well very soon. So stay stay. Oh, what's that? I've never seen that before. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome, Maria. Thank you. Now, I've shared Go With The Flow because so many people say to me, is this you? I failed by one or two marks. And let me know, is this you? I failed by one or two marks. So frustrating. Please let just put a comment in. If either it's you or you know somebody that that's happened to. Now, I've already shared this morning my roundabouts lesson. I've talked about, I talked about signalling at roundabouts to make it super easy for you. I've already shared the difference between this sign and this sign that people get mixed up with. And I've shared my contraflow. That's three or four questions you could be getting right extra. Already, you know that I've helped you with three or four questions that you could be getting right to tip you from that failing by one or two marks to passing by one or two marks. That's not what I want. I want you to get, I want you to be passing with almost or full marks in your theory test. That's what I want for you. Um, but the, what I'm doing now is just giving you an example of how I can, how I can help you. I, if you think I've helped you, then you know this course will help you. Um, I want to give you, I want to give you an option. I don't want you to take your test fail it and go do the same thing again. So I've gone through an app, I've failed. I go through an app again and fail. I go through an app again and fail. I go through a different app. The apps have all got the same questions. I've got the same questions because the DVSA, the Driver and Vehicle Standards Agency, they give us the questions. So all the apps have got the same questions, okay? So buying lots of different ones is not really going to help you. Unless you prefer the, the way one certain app runs, but they're the same questions, same answers. And I give you more than that. There are um, the official government figures are there's a 47 percent pass rate. That means that 53 percent of people are failing their theory test for all kinds of reasons. Um, can you tell me why do you think? Like, just tell you, just put a me. Uh, yeah, put me in the comments if this is you or you know somebody that this has happened to. I fail because I have anxiety. I fail because, thank you, butterfly. I fail because I don't revise enough. Thank you for that one, Mooney. I fail because I don't understand the questions. I fail because I have no motivation to study. I fail because I have no time to study. I fail because I have dyslexia or because I have ADHD, because I have learning difficulties. I fail because I can't read very well. I fail because I don't like reading. I fail because I don't understand. Thank you for that one. I fail because I have no motivation. I fail because anxiety wrecks my life, period. I fail because of anxiety, panic, mot no motivation. I fail because I don't understand the questions. I have no time. 
I, I fail because I don't speak English very well and I don't read English very well. I'm demotivated. All these reasons, and it's not because you can't pass. It's not because you can't pass. And some people have, uh, I get confused. Some people have learning difficulties. A lot of people don't. A lot of people who, so it's not just people who struggle to learn. It's, it's struggling to learn in this way. Reading a question and trying to memorise the answer. Morning, Siobhan, is not the way to learn about a topic. It might help you learn about a couple of different things, but it won't help. Reading a question about contraflows and saying, well, that's the right answer, will not teach you what a contraflow system is. Always face, you can pass. Uh, I have dyslexia, can, you can, someone read the question for you. You can have somebody, you can have somebody read the question for you. Awesome, awesome. I fail because anxiety, yeah, all kinds of reasons. And then people say that failing is um, language barrier. I know, my daughter has learning difficulties. She's a great driver, but the language is too complex for her. Bridget, have, have you considered um, having a one-to-one -one with a person called Chris Benstead? If you, um, if you go to, he is awesome and he will help your daughter. He's been doing this for years. A, a, a driving instructor, a trainer, runs a driving school. But a theory test expert is his main. Um, he's been on TV and all sorts. Is is awesome. Okay. Um, so so just screenshot now, Bridget, because he can help your daughter. Just go to that web website, um, email, uh, send a message and just say, um, can you put me in touch with Chris Benson? You don't have to have him. You could just chat to him and find out if you think he will help you. But he will. Um, I've taught people who have learning difficulties and I think one of my best ever drivers um, and she was actually best ever, um, but she struggled with the theories. When I st first started doing this, she was an awesome driver, but really struggled with the theory and the language, but he will help. Anyway, let me move on. You can't book your driving test until you pass your theory test. What I want to do is teach you to pass your theory test. That's what I'm doing this morning. Do you agree? Just put a yes in if you agree that I've taught you anything, because that is my aim. That's what I got up for this morning. Before I got up, that's what I was thinking about. What lessons am I going to deliver today? Because when I get these hearts flying up the screen, when I get these wonderful comments from people like Siobhan, people like Scott on here right now, then it motivates me to help more and more and more people. I um, mean, things like, Mrs, you're amazing. Thank you so much. Um, Scott, I can't wait to book my practical test. Absolutely. And when people say I've given up on driving because I can't pass my theory test, that I feel like is really, really sad because I know how awesome driving is. I, I learned to drive when I was about 12 or 13 off road. Absolutely love driving. It gives you so much freedom, doesn't it? You have so much more options in life to be able to drive. Um, and I don't want people saying I've given up on it. Thank you for all the hearts and things. Um, who's that, Susu? Um, so I created Theory Test Course and I spent, I spent actually years finding out what your struggles are. Years and years and years. Um, and I spent thousands of hours designing techniques and explanations and lessons to help you learn and remember easily and breaking it down into the lowest set. And even now, even now, I still, when someone says, well, I still don't understand, I think, okay, okay, what else can I do to help you to understand? Every day, this is what goes through my head. You got a cab? Uh, thank you, Tricia. Um, so this is what I do, and I put these into my lives and my course. I've spent years creating this course. My son's at work. Uh, they're all on YouTube. So ask him to follow me on TikTok when I see hundreds and hundreds of short videos, and YouTube, all these lives are in there as well. Um, the course has got stuff like worksheets, video tutorials, facts lists. You can listen to facts lists because listening helps you learn without even trying money uh, later. Yeah, um, I'm doing traffic lights later. Um, is it the traffic light sequence you want to know? Just let me know. Just put traffic light sequence in block capitals if that's what you want to know. Or traffic light S if you can't spell sequence or can't be bothered spelling sequence. Um, thank you, Mrs. 3990. Um, good luck for three o'clock today, Ryan. Um, so you can listen without even trying to learn when you, okay, money, money, yeah. um, you can learn without even trying when you're listening, okay, you listen to a song on the radio, a couple of days later, you find yourself singing along to that song, and you're like, how do I know that? 
and it's because you've heard it and that's why I've created audio with all these facts lists all these lists of facts you need to know um, in the theory I've created audio um, and I've put that audio into the course so you can listen while you're uh, brushing your teeth you can listen while you're walking the dog while you're cooking while you're getting the bus to school to college to work or whatever you will be 100% prepared to pass when you go all the way through it it's had 5,000 passes so far and the cost of it is only 34.99 the price of one single one hour driving lesson. I'm going to show you what's in the course in a one minute video. But first of all, I want to go through the traffic light sequence because two people have now just asked me, um, Ellie, does anybody else, just, just, put, uh, just put me in the comments if you want me to go through the traffic light sequence because the traffic light sequence is super easy. If you don't know it, you need to know it because you'll, again, if you're failing by one or two marks and you know the traffic light sequence, it will help you with so many different questions. Okay, so I've got at least five, six, seven me's there. So yeah, let me go through it. And there's 456 people on here. So I hope that you all want to see it. Anyway, the traffic light sequence. First of all, I want you to, I don't do one-to-ones, but Chris does. Chris works, we work together. I do these, he does one-to-ones. He's been doing one-to-ones for many, many more years than I've been an instructor. Okay, so screenshot now. Okay, so what I want you to know, Victoria Rose, yep. What I want you to know is the traffic light sequence is super, super easy. And if I wanted to teach it to a five-year-old now, I could. You just haven't tried to learn it, okay? Because we don't, do we? We just look at questions, look at answers and try and memorize the, the answer. And don't we don't think, do you know what? I better actually learn the sequence. But a five-year-old could learn it because they can learn a nursery rhyme with more than five steps for more than five words in it, can't they? Yeah? So, very true. I know, Dee Dee, I know. Um, it's just what we do. It's just how we, we just think we should know it and we just get on with it. But no, learn the sequence. The sequence is, don't laugh at me, the sequence is red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Okay, the sequence is red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Red, red and amber, green, amber, red. One more time. Red, red and amber, green, amber, red. So it just goes down and up again. But red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Cool. Now I'm going to point and you say it out loud, then put D in the comments saying I've done it. Even if you're whispering it because people are around, okay? fantastic why isn't it it's been designed this way red let me go through it very quickly red means stop and wait red and amber means stop and wait now when it's red and amber you know it's going to go green next you know that but so when it's red and amber you can prepare to go okay red red and amber green amber red red stop and wait red and amber stop and wait but you can prepare green means go if it's safe amber means stop and wait if you're already on the line then you're going to have to keep on going through if you're just just off the line you're going to have to keep on going through so you absolutely have stopped by the time it's red but don't skip through an amber they used to call it an amber gambler when um, when i was young not heard that phrase for a while okay stop and wait stop and wait go if it's safe stop and wait stop and wait okay one more time the sequence is red red and amber green amber red 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 and amber green amber red have that in your head all day red red and amber green amber red maybe draw some dots keep on saying it go and tell the cat the dog the parent the friend look at traffic lights as you go through your day and you will not forget it again does that has that helped you please listen i've got to remember i'm stood in my office talking to my phone so please put some comments in uh, put some yeses in or put some hearts flying up the screen if i'm helping you oh good one shimmer shimmer r r a g a r red red and amber green amber red yeah yeah awesome um r r raga r have a way of have a way, a method of helping yourself to remember. 
okay? And if um, if Raragar helps you, or if red, red and amber, green, amber, red helps you, teach it to your child, teach it to your, your younger brother or sister, yeah? Um, have a way of helping. If singing it helps you, tapping your fingers helps you, have a way of remembering for yourself. I can't stop saying, I know, Hurts, I'm sorry. I do have an email that says, I've got to throw my head all day. Raraga, raraga, yeah? If that helps you, then it will help you to forever. Now, if you can also remember my your grandson just done it with me. Do you know and exactly how old's your grandson? If he's three, four, five, he can learn it, can't he? He can learn it because you don't have to be clever. You don't have to be older to learn to know red, red and amber, green, amber, red. As a quick tip, a quick tip to help you. Um Pelican cross uh, right, no, 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 no. Toucan crossings. Uh, for for um for cyclists and pedestrians go red red and amber green amber red okay puffin crossings go red red and amber green amber red the only one that's different is pelican crossings that go red flashing amber green amber red pelican crossings are the different ones pelican crossings have the flashing amber phase flashing amber means you can go if the crossing's clear okay Pelican crossings are the one that's different. Write that down. Tell your grandson. <laughs> Write it down. Pelican crossing. I tell him to remind you which my daughter is singing the song of the light. <laughs> okay, one to ones. Who just asked me? There you go. One to ones. Now let me show you what's in my course. If you think I'm helping you, you know that this course will help you. Um, cool. Let me show you what's in the theory test course and how you'll go through it to guarantee you're a hundred percent test ready. Go to the introduction first, so you've got a really good understanding of what's expected in the theory test and how to go through the course. There are 14 different theory test topics. Let me show you what's in the accidents topic. You can download and print off a worksheet to fill in if you want to. You can fill it in while you're watching the video tutorials. Then you can listen to a fact list before you go and have a go at all of the official DVSA practice questions for that topic. When you've got all of the questions correct, have a go at the mock test for that topic. And when you get 10 out of 10 in the mock test, move on to the next topic and go through all of the topics in the same way so that by the time you get to the case studies and the full mock tests, you'll find answering the questions easy. Someone just asked me, what about steady amber? What, what's steady amber? Okay. Red, red and amber, green, amber. That's steady amber. Okay. That's steady amber. All right. Red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Red, red and amber, green, steady amber, red. Okay. The new highway code. I'm going to do it. I'll do a live. I'll do a live specific about the new highway code at the weekend. I've just written a blog yesterday about it. I'll do a live at the weekend about it and I'll make sure it's posted onto YouTube as well, okay? So I'll help you there. Don't worry about theory test questions in relation to the new highway code. That won't be until later this year. Also in my course, as, as if techniques to help you get rid of anxiety. Also in my course, I'm doing those today. Uh, yeah, James. Um, also in my course, techniques to score well in your hazard perception test, techniques to answer any multiple choice questions. And also you get free bonuses. If you sign up while I'm live, you get these free bonuses. You get a free hazard perception course worth $9.99. You get a free hypnosis course worth $14.99. I'm a master practitioner of hypnosis. That one there is my certificate. Um, um, I've created three uh, tr audio tracks, one for theory test, one for driving test and one for driving um, and you get those for free and you've always got them to, for all, always to use them if you want to. You're going to get two free ebooks if you sign up while I'm live. Oh, sorry, I missed that. I'm going to work now. Thanks, Siobhan. And you're going to get all those bonuses are worth $34.99. You only pay once. Um, so your hypnosis has helped me a lot. Thank you, I am. Um, motorway studs, not today, Sadie. I'm sorry, but it's in my um, it's on my YouTube channel. 
I've done it this week already. I may do it tomorrow. I will do it tomorrow. You pay once, you use the course for as long as you want. Most people take it between two and six weeks. Some people do it in a week. Um, I have heard of people do it in three or four days. I have heard of people who have bought it and just gone through some of it because you know I've just helped you with the traffic light sequence. You know that's going to mean I'm going to get one or two more questions correct. Um, everything I've helped you with today is going to help you get another question correct. You will really quickly see in here how you're going to pass as soon as you start going through the course. Um, this is what Amy said. Hello, you probably won't see this, but I want to thank you because your lives, videos have helped me to pass today and I'm very, very grateful. That was from Amy and some more. I've had um, no James. No, not till later on this year, later in the year. So months time, uh, months and months away. Um, Carla May Smith said, I passed my theory six times after buying your course on the 19th of September. Thank you so much. Fox Paper Scissors said, hi, Annie. I passed my test yesterday after a failed 13 attempts and through your course I passed. You will pass if you go through this course. You will have everything you need to pass this course. A lot of people worrying, ask Annie time. Um, about the new highway code. Please don't worry about the new highway code. I did a blog yesterday about the new highway code. I wrote a blog um, to go into the Test Buddy website. So go in, create an account in Test Buddy, um, and you'll see some free stuff there that'll really help you with your test. Um, and one of them, this blog I wrote yesterday. Now, everything I wrote down, practically everything, bar one thing, is what I've been teaching my learners for 10 years. So it's no different, it's just they've made it law now. They've made it a law or they're properly advising you to, to do this. Because if you don't, if it's not law, if it's saying you should, but you don't and you have an accident, they'll use it against you in, um, if, in, in court. If they're saying must, in the theory, in the in the highway code, if it's must, then you must do it if it's law. If they're saying should, then you should do it. And if you don't and have an accident, they'll use it against you. So the only thing is when you're going left or right, you should give way to pedestrians if they're waiting to cross. You should, if you can. And if you don't and you hit them, they'll use it in a court of law against you. Okay, that's the only thing that's different. So don't worry about the new highway code. I'm not finished, no. I'll be on for another, at least another hour. Um, so let's see what some people, somebody's asked me as well. I want to go through what is in an app. So if you're joining an app, if you're going to use an app to pass, to help pass your theory test, make sure it's a good app. Make sure it's an updated app, not a free app, because people don't create things for free to put it online for no reason, okay? So the free apps can be good to have a practice on, but they've not got everything you need in them. So you need a good app that will have all the official questions, mock tests, case studies, and has a perception. The difference in my course is that I'll have all of these, all of these extra ticks to teach you. So it has, um, it has about 90 video tutorials to teach you. It has uh, worksheets to practice, to, to, to answer if you want to. It has um, fact lists to listen to. It has um, test anxiety techniques, question techniques, has a perception techniques and games and uh, a section on how to know your test ready. Um, it has mini mock tests, or so mock tests for every topic. All of those things extra. Um, hey all, I'm new to learning to drive. Hi Diamond Painting, keep watching these. These will help you um, with your theory if you still need to pass a theory test. How many questions in your theory test? There's 50 questions, you're going to get asked 50 questions and you need to score 43 out of 50 to pass. You also need to pass your hazard perception on, this, on the same day. If you fail one part, you've got to retake both parts. So you have to pass your questions and your hazard perception on the same day. Can you tell me when you come live for other lessons? Mornings at nine o'clock. At the moment, I will do a lesson at nine o'clock every weekday morning. Um, I'll keep that going for the next couple of weeks and see how it goes. Make sure I'm not getting too tired. And in the evenings, I'll come on at half past six when I can. Most weekdays. I couldn't come yesterday because my husband got stuck on the motorway and I had to go and get the dog. Which one do I pick for the course? 
you mean you've clicked on the link and you're not sure which which uh, link to click? Let me show you. When you click on the link that I've just pinned for you, you will get three options. OK, the top one is theory test course. That's the one you're going to click on. If you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, click on the bottom one. If you want to buy the course as a gift for somebody else, click on the voucher, the middle one. Does that make sense? Cool. And it's only $34.99. My course is the price of one single one hour driving lesson. Don't forget to subscribe to me by clicking on that link. Uh, I walked across the road on a corner and a car didn't even stop. Uh, yeah, do you know what? Some people are not even aware of the of the new rules. Um, do you not get bored doing these? No, I don't get bored doing these. Um, it's just like a school teacher. They don't get bored doing what they're doing. Um, and that's what I'm doing is I'm teaching you to pass your theory test. Um, and when I'm trained to be a school teacher, um, I didn't get bored then either. I loved it. Um, so oh, if I get interaction, then it's... Um, then it's fine, okay? I am just standing here talking to a phone, but I can see people who are commenting and I can read those as I'm going along. If I get inter interaction, then I can keep on doing these forever. Do you also do, yes, I'm a driving instructor, Mish. I am a driving instructor. I run a driving school. I have driving instructors working from a driving school, which is called Spot On Driving. Uh, yeah, subscribe to me, follow me, like me, do all kinds of stuff, okay? My name is Annie. If you don't know me, um, Bikes can cause accidents. You're absolutely right, Demi Maria, but also car drivers cause accidents by not doing what they're supposed to do and pedestrians by walking out in front of people. We all need to be a bit um, more tolerant of each other and it'd be loads better. Thank you, Shim Shimmer. My name is Annie, but you, you, I, know, I know what you mean. Um, my name is Annie. Tell me where you are. Tell me, tell me, um, Tell me, is it your first time watching me? I love seeing people. I've seen you before, or it's my first time. I love to see that. And I'll come on to another lesson. My lesson that I'm covering next is, I can't find my list. I don't know. I don't know what I'm covering next. Stay with me, stay with me. It'll be something awesome, I promise you. Um, is it, you've seen me before, a few weeks now, Shim Shimmer, I know. Second time, first time, okay. First time, first time. Thank you, welcome, thank you for joining me. My name is Annie. Um, I'm an ADI. That means I'm an approved driving instructor. I am a driving instructor. I do deliver driving lessons and that's what I do. In the mornings, I've dedicated mornings now because my TikTok account has gone so crazy and people are really engaging with me uh, and I'm loving that um, and I'm loving helping you. Then I've, I've, um, I've, I've dedicated my mornings to helping you. And then in the afternoons, I go out delivering driving lessons. I'm also an audit trainer, so I might be doing that as well. I train people to become driving instructors. But as I said, I'm a theory test expert. Um, hi, you're an old student. Hi, for theory, theory or driving. Do you do automatic cars? Uh, yeah, I do. I'm not talking about prices right here because uh, this is all about theory. Uh, but if you do live in Knutsford or Northwich, let me know. Um, so I'm a theory test expert because so many people were telling me the struggle for the theory test. I'm on here live every morning from about nine till about half 11 at the moment. Um, uh, I've, I've been, I've created this course. I'll pin it for you to have a look at. Um, I've been awarded the most innovative driving school for the course. My driving school has been awarded superior achievement and excellence. My son, Lex, he works in my driving school. I taught him to become a driving instructor. Um, and he teaches automatic. I teach manual. My husband teaches ma uh, automatic, but he's also a, um, a, de a dentist. So he doesn't do too much driving instructing. The DVSA have looked at my courses and they're really happy with what I do, what I have created for you to help you pass your theory um, and they have um, and I'm really really proud of that I you do live but I am more proud of comments like this one comments like this I just wanted to show that I passed my theory with such a high mark on the multiple choice questions and 69 out of 75 on the hazard perception this is a huge thank you to you as your online course and TikToks helped me thoroughly isn't that awesome so what I'm going to share now is another question and it's my box junction question and I am covering crossings James if you can stay with me I am covering crossings and it won't be too long. Uh, 
First of all, I want to make sure, um, does my course have the show me, tell me questions? No, because that's to do with driving. My driving test course does, but you can have them for free. They're all in my YouTube uh, channel. Okay, so there's a video all about show me, tell me in my on my YouTube channel. So you click on this link, you can subscribe and go and see it there. So when may you enter a box junction? Let me make box junctions easy. And if you if you know the answer, please put the answer in. If you don't know the answer, please put IDK. If everybody knows the answer, if everybody knows the answer, then I'll skip this question and move on to the other question. Um, so I want to know, if you don't know it, please tell me so I can teach it to you. I do know that a lot, thousands of people get this wrong so if you don't if you're one of the people that don't know it don't worry about it just tell me so I can go through it with you okay okay let me go through because there's quite a lot of people who know there's quite a lot of people who don't know it's fine there always is people who don't know but I need you to tell me awesome thanks guys for joining in okay so yellow box junctions lots of paint is on the road bright yellow so you can see it really really clearly and it's there to keep parts of the road clear of traffic now igaka too i said i just memorized the answer and that's not what you want you want to understand so thank you for letting people like letting me know you're not on your own most people do uh, okay so a box junction is designed to keep parts of the road clear and the rules are really, really, very, very simple. So stay with me, I'll explain them to you. You only go into a box junction if you're sure you're not going to get stuck in the box junction when the traffic lights change. Does that make sense? I'll show you how in a second. But you want to make sure that when the traffic lights change, you're not going to be stuck in the box junction that would be really embarrassing, that would be really awkward, that would stop all the other traffic from proceeding, wouldn't it? Other traffic wouldn't be able to carry on driving because you would be stuck in the middle of the box junction. So the rules are really, really simple. Only go in if you're sure you're not going to be stuck there when the traffic lights change. Does that make sense? And I'll move on to the next slide if it does. Let me know. Just put a yes in the comments if that makes sense. Yay, awesome, awesome. Let me show you how you know. Now look, at there's two lanes of traffic. Is the, just here, there's a lane there and a lane next to it. The blue car has stayed behind the line. The green car has carried on to wait in the box junction. The blue car staying behind the line, even though the traffic lights are on green. Can anybody tell me why the blue car has stayed behind the line? Why has it not? Why is it not gone? It wants to go where the red arrow is. The blue car wants to go there where the red arrow is. Why hasn't he gone? James. Absolutely. He's not gone because the orange car is stationary. That orange car is not moving because there's lots of other traffic in front of it. OK, so the green car would have to wait in the box junction just where the red arrow is and he might be stuck there. The red car's in the way. Absolutely. So it's not the blue car's not going to go until he's sure he can get all the way across the box junction and clear the box junction. He's going to wait behind the line. The green car, on the other hand, has gone to wait in the box junction. The green car is going right where the blue arrow is pointing. The green car is going right into the road where the blue arrow is pointing and there's no traffic stopping that green car turning into his road. His exit road, the road he's going into, is clear. All the green car is wait, waiting for is for those white cars to get past. When the white cars have gone past, the green car will be able to turn. When the traffic lights change and all the cars stop, the the green car could turn. He wouldn't be stuck 
in the box junction. Now, please tell me, does that make any sense to you? Double tap the screen um, or put yes if that makes sense. That makes sense. It's re The rules are, are really, really simple. That is just it. Fantastic. The rules are you can wait in a box junction if your exit road is clear. That means if the road you're going into is not blocked with traffic. You can wait in a box junction if all you're waiting for is oncoming traffic, like the white cars here, if you're waiting for oncoming traffic to get past you. You can't wait in a box junction if your exit road is blocked. That makes sense. So let's come back to the question. When may you enter a box junction? When there are fewer than two vehicles ahead, when your exit road is clear, when traffic signs direct you. Do you know when people say, please read my comment? Um, I'd have to keep scrolling to find your comments. I, there's, there's four comments on the screen at any one time for me and then they disappear. So I don't know what your comment is. So when may you enter a box junction? Now, if I've helped you, then what I want you to do, please, thank you, Daniela, is double tap the screen and let me know. Put your answer in. Thank Goldie, very, very, um, very colourful. Um, put your answer in, then double tap the screen and let me know that I've actually helped you to answer the theory test question about box junctions. I've helped you to understand box junctions because before you were memorising the answer, you didn't properly understand it. I love your way in teaching. Thank you. Thank you for that comment. That's lovely. So you're absolutely right. You've all got it right. You can enter a box junction when your exit road is clear. Another box junction question. When may you stop and wait in a box junction? When oncoming traffic prevents you from turning right. When you're in a queue of traffic turning left, when you're in a queue of traffic going ahead or when you're on a roundabout. You know the answer. You do know it. Get rid of the rubbish answers. And you will know. Well, awesome. Yeah, fantastic, guys. So when oncoming traffic, the traffic coming towards you, prevents you from turning right, you can wait. Because at some point, the oncoming traffic will stop and you can go. Thank you. You're really helping so many people. Oh, thank you. Any, any, is that any? You can't say that properly. Um, so it wouldn't be when you're in a queue of traffic turning left or when you're in a queue of traffic going ahead, was it? Okay, does that make sense? Awesome. My name is Annie and I'm here making theory easy for you. I'm here every day of the week, every weekday, making theory easy because I am passionate about helping you. I know that you are not getting the help that you need. You're just getting questions and answers. It doesn't help you to learn. It helps you to memorize if you can memorize. You passed two years ago, did you, James? You don't need this, but it's giving you a, a recap, is it? That's awesome. You passed yesterday, Leanne Bauer. Yay, congratulations. Daniela, good luck for today. Keep telling me what questions do you struggle the most with? Live UK. I don't know what that means. Uh, sorry. What question do you most struggle with? Let me know while we're going through this live. I, if I, if I, even if I don't um, read them out, I can see what you're putting. Um, and everything you've put so far, motorways, Reflective still to signs and lines. I do cover all of those in my lives. Um, and crossings, I cover those in my lives as well. And um, everything you need is this um, in this course. But all of those things that you've just talked about are covered in these lives. So keep watching, make sure you're following me. I'm an ADI, approved driving instructor. I'm an audit trainer. Um, oh, temporary signs, okay, okay. I'm also a theory test expert. I've created a course to help you get all the way through your theory test step by step and 100% prepared to pass when you've done that. I've won an award for the course. I've won an award for my driving school as well. The DVSA have looked at my course, all my courses, and they've um, double tapped the screen, says Scott. That would be awesome. Um, and they're, they're happy with my course and what it can deliver, which is why they've given me all the official theory test questions. Um, and this is what Cimarron had to say about the course. And then I'm going to go through Know Your Speed. 
Okay, Simarone said, give me a five star review. I said, I've just wanted to share that I passed my theory with such a high mark on the multiple choice questions and 69 out of 75 for the hazard perception. This is a huge thank you to you as your online course and TikToks helped me thoroughly. Kind regards, Simarone. Let's go through Know Your Speed. What's the answer to this question, guys? Can you answer this question? Yeah, in for Northern Ireland, there's just a couple of questions that are different. Um, and one of those is the, well, if you email, if you buy the course, then email me and I'll tell you what the difference is. But just um, a couple of questions. So it's suitable for Northern Ireland, yeah. So what's the national speed limit for cars and motorcycles on a dual carriageway, 30, 50, 60 or 70 miles per hour? And you don't know, that's fine. I'm going to go through it with you. I'm going to make it easy for you. So remember, this is talking about cars and motorcycles. The different speed limits we'll see on our roads are, in this country, are 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and 70. OK, so just put a, a, a yes if you if you get that slide. That's a different speed. The range of speed limits will be between 20 and 70. Always awesome. Good, okay, so if the speed limit is 20 miles per hour, there'll be a sign telling you that the speed limit, yes I am, that there will be a sign telling you the speed limit is 20 miles per hour. You're going to find that near schools, you're going to find that in built up areas, the speed limit is only 20 miles per hour because they want you to keep uh, pedestrians much safer. You're going to find there may be um, traffic calming, so things, um, yeah, things that make you all slow down like this build out here, okay? So traffic calming measures, 20 miles per hour, but there will be a sign in a red circle, I'm going to tell you now, Dee Dee, there'll be a sign in a red circle telling you what the speed limit is. Circle signs are orders. Make a circle shape with your hand. Now look at that circle and you can see the shape of an O for order. Red circle signs tell you what you must not do. You must not go faster than 20 miles per hour on this road. So if it's 20 miles per hour, the speed limit, there'll be a sign to tell you. If it's 30 miles per hour on the road, there may not be any sign. If there are no signs, but there's regular street lighting on the road, the speed is limit is 30 miles per hour. So no signs, but regular street lighting, the speed limit is 30 miles per hour. There might be a sign, but there probably won't be a sign to tell you. If there was a 40 sign on this road, the speed limit would be 40. If, if there was a 20 sign on this road, the speed limit would be 20. If there's no signs on this road, the speed limit would be 30 miles per hour. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay, cool. If the speed limit is 40 miles per hour, then there will be a sign to tell you. If the speed limit is 50 miles per hour, then there will be a sign to tell you. Okay, so 20, 40 and 50, there'll be a sign. 30, there might not be a sign, but there might be regular street lighting to tell you it's 30. Let's move on to national speed limits. The national speed limit means the fastest you're allowed to drive for the type of vehicle you are driving and for the type of road that you are on. So this is the national speed limit sign. If you see this sign and you're driving a car or riding a motorbike, this sign means 
you're allowed to go 60 miles per hour if you're on a single carriageway road and you're allowed to go 70 miles per hour if you're on a dual carriageway road. Does that make sense? Does that make sense guys? Let me know. If you see that sign and you're driving a car or riding a motorbike, it means you can go 60 miles per hour if you're on a single carriageway road. You can go 70 miles per hour if you're on a dual carriageway road. Let me know if that makes sense. You don't understand the difference in roads. Don't worry, I'm going to go through that with you now. Because again, it's all easy when you know. It's all easy when somebody's taught it to you. This is what I'm doing. It's all in the course if you want step-by-step -step process to passing your theory test. It's all in this course. Okay, so people do get mixed up. What, what is the difference between a dual carriageway and a single carriageway road? Who can tell me what the difference is between a single carriageway and a dual carriageway road? Can you put some comments in? Christy. <laughs> What's that? Okay, broom and groom. Okay. Okay, so there's a lot of people, this is why I'm covering this. So if you're getting it wrong, if I'm just going to explain now that you've got it wrong, I don't want you to worry about it. I want you to say, oh, because this is why I'm covering it, because so many people are getting this wrong. A dual carriageway road is a road that has a central reservation, okay? It doesn't matter how many lanes it's got. A single carriageway road can have one lane or it can have two lanes. A dual carriageway road can have one lane or two lanes or three lanes. It doesn't make a difference how many lanes it's got. It makes a difference of how many carriageways there are. Look at this, this is one road. Then there's a barrier and this is another road. It's a dual carriageway, a dual road, two separate carriageways, two separate roads. And they're separated by a barrier or a grass verge or something that means you can't just drive over to the other side. Does that make sense? So lines painted on the road means it's a road, um, a single carriageway road. An actual barrier that means you can't drive over makes it a dual carriageway road. So it could be a patch of grass, a grass verge. It could be a metal fence, it could be a wall, it could be a curb. It's something that means you can't just drive over to the other side. And that's why people get mixed up because they're saying that it's a dual carriageway because there are two lanes and a two lanes does not make it a dual carriageway. A central reservation makes it a dual carriageway. Does that make sense? Let me know if that makes sense. I'll move on to my next slide. Failed by one squirrels. Do something different next time. Whatever you decide to do, do something different to next time because it means you've got eight questions wrong. Going through a course, having a one-to-one, -one, reading a book, having a driving instructor help you. Like I say, doing this course that I'll just pin there for you. They'll all help you to get high marks when you go for your theory test, if not all of them correct. Okay, awesome guys. So let's go through these couple of slides. One of these is a single carriageway road and one of these is a dual carriageway road. Let me explain it. This one here has got lines separating the traffic. This one here has got grass, that's that green stuff, is grass separating the traffic. But they've both got two lanes going in each direction. Which one of them is a dual carriageway? Is it this one with lines? painted on the road or this one with a grass verge. Awesome. This one with a grass verge is a dual carriageway road 
because it's got a, a central reservation. Cool. Cool. Okay, so what is the national speed limit on this road? Those, li those are lines painted on the road. There's two lanes for traffic going up the road, two lanes for traffic going down the road, and lines painted on the road to separate the traffic. Is it a single carriageway or is it a dual carriageway? And what is the speed limit? Is it 60 or 70? You're absolutely right. It is a, it is a single carriageway road and the speed limit is 60 miles per hour for cars and motorcycles. Cool. What about this slide here? What is the national speed limit for cars and motorbikes on this road? So this green bit is a grass verge. Two lanes for traffic going up the road, two lanes for traffic coming down the road, and there's a central reservation in the middle, and on that central reservation is a grass verge. So what's the national speed limit on this road? So that grass verge is a physical barrier because you can't drive from this lane over to this lane without going over, without staying on road, without going over grass. So this that's a central reservation. That is the barrier and the speed limit. Therefore, it's a dual carriageway road and the speed limit is 70 miles per hour. It is two separate roads. Dual carriageway means two separate roads. It doesn't mean two lanes. It means one road for traffic going up the road, one road for traffic coming down the road and a barrier in between. That means you can't drive across it. Cool. So let's come back to the question. What's the national speed limit for cars and motorcycles on a dual carriageway? Is it 30, 50, 60 or 70 miles per hour? Thank you, Rooks. No, dual carriageways and motorways have the same speed limits. Dual carriageways have a central reservation. Motorways have a central reservation as well. And the speed limit is 70 as well. So you're absolutely right. 70 miles. Where's that gone? 70 miles per hour. Well done. I didn't press the slide properly. 70 miles per hour. Absolutely right. Well done, guys. That's awesome. Fab. So, I mean, I hope I hope you're learning something. I hope I'm helping you here. Um, there are no speed limit signs on the road. How is a 30 miles per hour limit indicated? By pedestrian islands, by street lighting, by hazard warning lines, by double or single yellow lines. What was the right answer? Is it A, B? C or D. I'll just click the link there for you. If I'm helping you now, then you know my course will help you. It's not like this, it's not as drawn out. This is a lesson. Um, my course is more ch video tutorials, but it's there to help you. It, it, and it will give you a step-by-step -step process. You're absolutely right. The answer there is B, street lighting. For those who've just joined, if you're driving down a road and it has street lights, regular street lights, and there are no, there's no signs to tell you what the speed limit is, that means the speed limit on that road is 30 miles per hour. I'm already getting confidence. Awesome. Okay, and... Um, Final one in this in this lesson. What's the meaning of this sign? Does it mean local speed limit applies, no waiting on the carriageway, national speed limit applies, or no entry for vehicles? What does this sign mean? Keep the lights coming down. I'm, I'm aiming for more likes than I've ever had before. So keep double tapping that screen. That would be awesome. I'll have to come on for a lot longer, won't I? But I've got a fair few likes, haven't I? Yeah. 
thank you guys okay so this sign means national speed limit applies absolutely so there won't be a sign telling you what the speed limit is because the speed limit will be different if you're riding um if you're driving a car or if you're driving a lorry or if you're towing a caravan the speed limit would be 10 miles per hour less if you're towing a caravan this or, or you're driving a lorry okay so it's 10 miles per hour less if you're than, than if you're driving a car okay does that make sense that's my know your speed lesson um and I have covered Know Your Speed because so many people are getting mixed up with speed limits, the overthinking, and so many people are not just learner drivers, not just learner drivers, they get mixed up with what a single carriageway and what a dual carriageway actually is. You saw that, some people know it, but loads of people don't know, and I want people to know. What's going to happen? What could happen, guys? The second, double guessing as well, yeah, second guessing. What could happen um, if you're driving down a road that has two lanes, it doesn't have um, a central reservation and you see a national speed limit sign? What could happen? Do you understand? Husband asks you all the time. So you're driving down the road, there's two lanes, but there's not a central reservation. So there's two lanes. You could mistake it for a dual carriageway, absolutely, Emma, and, and yet means the speed limit is 60 court, 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 side, court side. But people think because there's two lanes, the speed limit is 70 and they're breaking the law. I know people that have been breaking the law for years until the fact, until I'm had a chat with them when we were out and about having a meal or at the pub and they're like really that's a single carriageway i thought it was a dual carriageway people break the law and they get points on the license and they don't even realize and that um, if you can get to grips with these speed limits you're not going to do that you're not going to get points on your license for speeding accidentally um and you're going to pass your theory test there's 47 percent pass rate the official government figures say that 1.9 million people are taking their test 879,000 people are passing that means that only 47 percent of people are passing and that means that 53 percent of people are failing their theory test for all kinds of reasons they're failing because they're um, why do you think they're failing, guys? Give me a reason. Let's, let's find three or four, five reasons why you think people are failing the theory test. So can anybody, there's 500 not people on here, so a couple of people put an answer in for me. Why do you think people are failing their theory test? They don't listen to Annie, they overthink the questions. Not enough studying, not enough revision, second guessing, anxiety, nervous. Um, they don't understand the questions, fear. Um, they get confused because it's not even a nice environment in there. You can hear people next to you. Uh, do you know what? I've not heard that before, Phoebe, but I, 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 I totally get it. I totally get that. Um, if you, if you struggle to get that, get that um, out of your head. But if you can go through some confidence um, uh, techniques before you go in there, then you, you can help to block out those other people. Okay, keep keep headphones on as well. Uh, not, don't, the, don't learn, just memorise the answers. Lack of preparation. Um, questions of words are similar, and that means that what they've done is they've tried to memorise and not try to actually understand the topic. Okay, horrible place to go. Oh, I'm sorry you all feel like that, or some of you feel like that. You fail by one mark on Monday, don't fail it again. Go through this course. Let me tell you about the course. Let me tell you what, what I'm offering, what I'm doing, when I'm next live, etc., etc. And we move on to my final lesson of the day. Um, so um, not failing, especially when it's one or two marks again and again and again, that becomes really embarrassing and frustrating. Um, and, and uh, yeah, uh, um, and a waste of time and a waste of your money. And you can't actually book your driving test till you pass your theory test. Questions like how to fit a head restraint. It's, you don't get asked how to fit a head restraint because they are fitted in the car. Um, 
but you'd be asked um, what you what, what you asked the therapist about the head restraint. It's there to keep your head and your neck safe in injury. You need to make sure it's it's adjusted correctly. It's as close to the back of the head as is comfortable. Um, that's what you get asked in your theory. Understanding is the key. Not only will it help you in theory, but safe driving, absolutely. And that's what I want to do. I want to teach you to avoid neck injury, Holly Coaster. Yeah, how it should be positioned. Yeah, thank you, Butterfly. Um, I've got hundreds of questions in my head and I couldn't think what you actually get asked about the, uh, the head restraint, but it's not how to fit it. It's how it should be positioned. Um, so you should be positioned so it's as close to the back of the head as is comfortable. So not touching your head, but quite close to the back of your head. It should be fitted so that the, the um, thick part of it is in line with the tops of your ears or your eyes. Um, I want to teach you to pass. And that's what I've, why I've created this course. I've created a step-by-step -step process. I've spent years, I've spent thousands of hours finding out what your um, struggles are, what you actually struggle with, and then designing techniques and explanations and uh, um, to help you learn and easily remember. And I hope that's what I'm doing today. I'm breaking it down so you can just remember. I'm not just saying that is the answer. That is the answer to that question. That doesn't help you to learn. Um, I will go through some questions and answers sometimes at other times of the day, but this is here to teach you. This course has been designed to teach you. It's got worksheets, it's got video tutorials, it's got fact lists, it's got all the official DVSA questions, it's got, to it's got topic mock tests, full mock tests, case studies, anxiety techniques, and so much more. Uh, you will be 100% prepared to pass when you go all the way through it. It's got everything you need. Uh, it had more than 5,000 passes so far. You're only going to pay 34.99. the price of one single one-hour driving lesson. Driving, getting on the road, will cost thousands of pounds. You've got to take, take your theory test at least £23 if you only take it once. You've got to have driving lessons about £30, £40 an hour. You've got to take your driving tests at least £62 if you take it once. You've got to buy a car. You've got to insure a car. You've got to put fuel in a car. All of that stuff is going to cost you thousands. This is a £34.99 investment in all of that. So you can get on the road much quicker and you don't waste money again and again and again. You don't waste time again and again and again. 12 times failing. That's what, 230 50, about 260, 270 pound on, and you're not on your own. So many people are wasting that amount of money on failing and you won't if you go through this course, you will be prepared to pass it. Let me show you what's in it, then we'll move on to our next lesson. It's not unusual, I've, I've dealt with people who, hundreds of people who failed it 10, 12, 15 or more times. Let me show you what's in the theory test course and how you'll go through it to guarantee you're 100% test ready. Go to the introduction first. So you've got a really good understanding of what's expected in the theory test and how to go through the course. There are 14 different theory test topics. Let me show you what's in the accidents topic. You can download and print off a worksheet to fill in if you want to. You can fill it in while you're watching the video tutorials. Then you can listen to a fact list before you go and have a go at all of the official DVSA practice questions for that topic. When you've got all of the questions correct, have a go at the mock test for that topic. And when you get 10 out of 10 in the mock test, move on to the next topic and go through all of the topics in the same way so that by the time you get to the case studies, and the full mock tests, you'll find answering the questions easy. Okay, so um, so people like, um, was it Jack, who said uh, he passed first time? Awesome, that's brilliant. Um, did you pass all your exams at school first time? Um, and could you uh, run faster than anybody else and do maths better than anybody else? Some stuff that other, other people find dead easy. Do you find all of that really easy? 
Do you find it really easy to be to do chemical engineering? Um, could you get into Oxford University? Couldn't you find everything easy? Just because you found it easy, which is great, I'm really, really happy for you, doesn't mean other people do. The 53% of people are failing because 53% of people are struggling. And because you didn't, that is really, really great for you. Um, but telling other people that they shouldn't be struggling or making it feel like they shouldn't be struggling when they are doesn't really doesn't really help them. Everyone is different. And yet, you know, some people find it dead easy to run six miles in a five minute mile. Can you do that? And would you like someone to say, come on, it's easy. Why can't you do that? Could you catch a ball with one hand when you were two years old? I know somebody who could and found it dead easy, but never in his whole life said to people, why can't you do that? It's easy. Okay, so it doesn't really help people come on here to 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 criticise them. But if you got it, that is awesome for you. And I'm really, really happy for you. I'm sure everybody else is as well. Um, if you suffer from anxiety, that's why I became, because lots of people do, and that's why I became a... Um, an NLP master practitioner, a confidence coach, and a master practitioner of hypnosis. My certificates are just behind me, well, two of them are. Um, <laughs> two of them are there. Um, and they are, I've created techniques to help you get rid of your anxiety. Thanks, Shim Shimmer. Um, I just don't like people to be made to feel like they should be able to do something. I can do stuff that you can't. You can do stuff that I can't. Do you know, I had somebody in my car years ago and she couldn't drive very well. She was taking time to get to grips with driving. She's passed now, of course. And she said, I bet you think I'm stupid. And this young lady was in the something called the London National London School of Dance. She, that's why she was going a couple of weeks later. Of course, I don't think she's daft. I think she's a genius at dancing. I couldn't do that. Um, techniques in the course to help you score well in your hazard perception test. Techniques in the course to help you answer any multiple choice questions. Um, and you get free bonuses as well. You get a hazard perception course worth $9.99. You get my hypnosis course worth $14.99. And you get two free ebooks top 10 reasons for failure, top 20 hardest theory test questions if you sign up while I'm live. Uh, Thank you, Mo Moye, was that? I sorry, I can't see it now. There's something blocking my screen. Um, the free bonuses are, are, are worth $34.95. You only pay once. Uh, money, thank you. That's what I'm here for, making theory easy for you and helping people. And do you know the people that say, Jakey, yeah, he does. Um, people that say, I passed the first time. I, I, I bet it wasn't, um, I bet they don't know all of this stuff. You, you, you can guess answers. You can guess answers. Um, doesn't mean you know everything. Um, you pay once, use the course for as long as you want to use it for, but most people take between two and six weeks to go all the way through it. Some people will go through it in a few days or a week. It's entirely up to you. But as soon as you start it, you will very quickly see and hear how you're going to pass. Here's some people that have passed using the course already. Got my speeding awareness course. It's supposed to be really, really interesting. Everybody that I know that's gone through it, so it's really, really interesting. Um, that, that gambit said, I passed yesterday, I used so many of your te techniques. Thank you. Um, passed my theory yesterday, thank you for your help. I passed my theory six times after buying your course on the 19th of September. The actual question in theory, or are they similar? Top 20 hardest theory test questions. They're the hardest theory test questions that are in the theory test. The ones that people mostly get wrong. Georgia, good luck for 12 today. I'll just have a look at any other questions in here for me. Am I going over crossroads? Crossroads, no. One to one. I've already... Um, answered a lot of these questions awesome have you got any questions for me got your theory tomorrow lucy um good luck for tomorrow what time is it and you feel um you feel ready um this course you've got your theory next week this course will help you to pass your theory test yes it is all online um what else have i seen uh, road signs are covered in detail on this course 
at all and is using her time as some people didn't being disrespectful butterfly i have not I, I i honestly i can't read all the comments so the disrespectful ones I, I can't see at the moment um how many video case studies are case studies are there in the theory okay let me talk about that for a minute then i'll move on so a, what a, a case study is where you'll watch a 20 second a very short video and then you will answer three questions about what you've seen in the video. So you might watch a video of, for example, a car towing a, a caravan driving down a motorway. You might see that video, okay? And that's all you'll see. Um, and then you get asked three questions about what you've seen. And they might say to you, what speed is that car towing the caravan allowed to drive at? Butterfly souls, can you answer my question straight away? That was quick. How did you do that? Did you know what I was going to say? So what speed is a car towing a caravan allowed to drive on a motorway? Does anybody else know the answer? That might that be one of the case study questions. Anybody else know the answer? absolutely 60 miles per hour is the answer um the question might be what other question might you get um what lane can't the car tow the caravan drive in what lane 10 miles per hour less than the speed limit james awesome what lane is this car, car towing the caravan not allowed to drive in it's not allowed to drive in lane three of a three lane motorway brilliant um they might ask you um what causes this to happen that you can might see the caravan start to do this and ask you what causes that to happen there is one case study in the test, side wins, absolutely. So that'd be three questions based on watching that video um, of the car towing a caravan drive down a motorway, okay? Um, and then you can watch that video and pause the video and rewind the video, watch it as many times as you want to in order to answer the question ease off the accelerator to stop it swaying jordan good tip it's all in my course everything you need to know about all the theory tests step-by-step -step process and how to pass um, is in this course for the price of a one of a one hour driving lesson about the price of a one hour driving lesson make sure you subscribe to my youtube channel all my lives this week will be going into my youtube channel make sure you sub Follow me on Instagram, follow me on TikTok, and you see loads more help. Um, so what time is it? So I'm going to skip that question because I'm running out of time. I'm going to go straight to my final lesson, which is Tanuka. That's awesome. I'm going to go... I'm going to go... You're very lucky that you've got a discount on driving lessons because you're a student. Um, I'm going to go to Crossings Made Simple. Who wants to hear my Crossings Made Simple lesson right now? I want you all to double tap the screen. If you want the help with hazard perception, then this course gives you a free hazard perception course. There's a whole, there's hazard perception in the course. You, you also get a free course all about hazard perception. I'm covering Crossings Made Simple now. Um, I'll be finished at half past 11. Um, it's not rocket science, it's not rocket science, of course it's not rocket science. If you know it all, that's awesome, well done. Um, it is great feeling to know it all. Is it a great feeling to mock other people? Who don't know? I say, I know it, you don't. It's kind of primary school, isn't it? Cool. So... At a puffin crossing, which colour follows the green signal? Is it flashing amber, steady red, flashing green or steady amber? Thank you, LSG02. Watch which, at a puffin crossing, which colour follows the green signal? Jordan, stay with me. Stay with me, do, do your best. Just watch this. This might help take, tip you into a pass next time. So stay with me for this lesson because I'll teach you a few different things within this lesson, okay? So, there's a few things you need to know. 
And if you don't know, put IDK for I don't know. Cool. Okay, so the first thing you need to know is the traffic light sequence. I've already covered it today. I know some of you have only just joined, but please tell me, if you do you know the traffic light sequence? Are you confident with the traffic light sequence or not? Please tell me. Just put a yes, um, I know it, or no, I don't know it. No, I don't know the traffic light sequence, or I'm not confident with it. Yes, I absolutely know the traffic light sequence, and I'm confident with it. I want to know whether I need to skip this next slide or not. A bit, okay, a bit. You're not 100% sure. Okay, your hubby taught you good hubby. Okay, awesome. Let's go through the sequence um, because you need to know the sequence. Go through it, please, Marshmallow, Mushroom Marlow. Um, so that you need to know the sequence um, to answer a fair few different theory test questions and, and certainly questions on crossings as well. And to be a safe driver and to be able to prepare yourself uh, when you're driving um, and, and help yourself to not break the law. So the sequence of traffic lights is red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Okay, the sequence of traffic lights is red, red and amber, green, amber, red. It goes down and up again, red, red and amber, green, amber, red. So I'm going to point, you're going to say, and then you're going to put a D for done. So you say the words out loud. Sing it, red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Chant it, red, red and amber, green, amber, red. That is the sequence of traffic lights, red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Remember that, say it out loud, um, shout it, sing it, chant it, whatever you want to do, red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Red, red and amber, red, red and amber, green, amber, red. It goes down and up again. Awesome. So you need to know that sequence. Say that out loud a few times and you will learn it. You know that. You've learned the words to Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. You've learned, you can learn the words red, red and amber, green, amber, red super easily, can't you? Now the next thing that you need to know is what every single traffic light means because people get mixed up. I would say that most people on my lives still get mixed up with what the meaning of the different colours is the official meaning. Let's go through it. So what do you think red traffic light means? What does a red traffic light mean? Pop your answers in. There's 334 people on here. So come on guys, put lots of comments in. Let me know what red traffic light means. I want loads, I want, this, this is an interactive lesson. So it's not a lesson for me to talk to myself, looking at myself on the screen for two and a half hours. I need, I need you to interact with me. Fantastic guys, well done. So red does mean stop and wait. Cool, so the next one is red and amber. Red, red and amber. What does red and amber together mean? So put your answers in here. What does red and amber together mean? Now when I say what does red and amber mean, I don't mean what can you do, I mean what must you do by law. Not what can you do. Yes, you can get ready. It's a good idea to get ready. But what must you do by law? It's not law. Get ready to move isn't law. What is law, Tinky Emma? What must you do by law? You, they can't tell you by law you must prepare stop and wait fantastic guys well done give yourself a pat on the back so red means stop and wait red and amber means stop and wait of course you can prepare to go but it means stop and wait and then green means go if it's safe good red red and amber green amber so what does amber on its own steady amber mean the next one to come is going to be red so what must you do on amber Hang on, I just want to come on and say thank you so much. I passed with her yesterday, so thank you, Jamie. Jamie Lee, awesome. I remember that picture, yeah, awesome. Congratulations, thanks. For, thank you so much for popping on and letting me know, cheering me up. Okay, 
So amber means stop and wait. It doesn't mean slow down. It doesn't mean prepare to stop. What's prepare? There has to be a, a thing that it actually means and prepare to doesn't mean anything. Um, what's somebody else said? Slow down. Well, you could be going 39 miles per hour and you slow down to 38 miles per hour. Amber doesn't mean to do that. Amber means stop and wait behind the line. If you're already on the line or far too close to the line, you're going to have to keep on going through. But you should, if it's on green, you should be preparing that the traffic lights might change so you can stop on amber. So red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Stop and wait, stop and wait, go if it's safe, stop and wait, stop and wait. Does that make sense, guys? Let me know. Let me know if that makes sense. I need to get through these slides, so I'm finished at around about half past. So I've got to, I've got another appointment. Cool, stop and wait, absolutely. So that's what you need to know. You need to know the traffic light sequence and you need to know what each traffic light colour means. And now we'll go on to the different crossings. You also need to know the difference between the crossings. So, first of all, you've got a zebra crossing. A zebra crossing is not a traffic light controlled crossing. It's a crossing with black and white markings painted on the road like a zebra and beacons on both sides of the road. Hey, Shannon, beacons on both sides of the road, black and white poles with an, with an, um, an amber um, bauble on top. OK, zebra crossing. Now, the next one I'm going to talk to you about is an equestrian crossing. An equestrian crossing is a traffic light controlled crossing with exactly the same sequence, red, red and amber, green, amber, red. It is for horse riders and pedestrians to use together. Just put a H for the letter, for, uh, for the letter H for horse if you understand that. You've never heard of it. You will get asked about it in your theory. Um, you'll come across it if you go through all of your theory questions, okay? So an equestrian crossing is going to be a bit wider than normal crossings. It's going to have a button that's high up so that horse riders can stay on their horses and press the button and horses can ride across the road and pedestrians can walk across the road. You've got it, fantastic. The next one we're going to go through is a toucan crossing. Butter Butterfly, so sky, eh, so ski, awesome. Congratulations. Okay, you have one where you live. Uh, uh, there you go, Emma. Yeah, so some people have never seen them. If, you, if, you, if your house is right near one, you're gonna see it every day. Okay, so next one is a toucan crossing. A toucan crossing is a traffic light controlled pedestrian crossing that has exactly the same sequence. It goes red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Exactly the same sequence. And it's for cyclists and pedestrians to use together. You can easily remember that a toucan crossing is for cyclists and pedestrians. If you think of toucan, two can cross, just like Goldie's put in the comments. Have a look at Goldie's comments. Two can cross together. OK, it's two can crossing. Cyclists can cycle across the road and pedestrians can walk across the road. At other crossings, cyclists would have to get off the bike and push the bike across the road. Does that make sense? Put a T for toucan, if that makes sense. Let me know. Put a T for toucan, if that makes sense to you. I need to know. Give me some likes, guys. Please double tap the screen. Give me some likes. I'm aiming for more likes than I've ever had before in this live. It's going really, 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 really well. Fantastic. The next type of crossing I want you to know about is a puffin crossing. A puffin crossing is a traffic light controlled pedestrian crossing with exactly the same sequence. It goes red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Yeah, put P for puffin if you understand that. Now, a puffin crossing, it knows when a pedestrian is on the crossing. It knows when a pedestrian is in the crossing. How does it know? It knows because there's a sensor. Look at the black arrow at the bottom pointing to a box. And that box is a sensor that detects 
if people are on the crossing. Remember what I said, it has exactly the same sequence, red, red and amber, green, amber, red, exactly the same sequence, but it might change to green a bit quicker if there's nobody crossing the road. Okay, so it knows when a, when a pedestrian is on the crossing. And you can easily remember that a puffing crossing is the intelligent crossing with the same sequence. If you think of the words puff in to stand for puff pedestrian user friendly intelligent, puff in intelligent, yeah, puff in intelligent. Yeah, does that make sense? Does that make sense? Put a yes if that makes sense. Puffin, same sequence. The sequence might change a bit quicker. Do all puffin crossing. It's, if, it's a, if it has a sensor, Alana, it's a puffin crossing, okay? So, yeah, that's what a puffin crossing is. Yeah, that makes sense. Fantastic. Now, this is the one that, please tap the screen while you're listening. Please tap the screen while you're listening. That'll be awesome. Okay, now a pelican crossing is different. A pelican crossing is a traffic light controlled pedestrian crossing that has a different sequence. It's the only one that has a different sequence. It goes red, flashing, amber, green, amber, red. So it doesn't have red and amber together, which means stop and wait. It has flashing amber instead. Now, flashing amber means that you can dr keep on driving if no one's on the crossing. So pelican crossing goes red, flashing amber, green, amber, red. All of the others go red, red and amber. Does that make sense? So Leka, you can go if it's safe to do so. Absolutely. Um, if it's a pedestrian, crossing or about to cross on flashing amber you would wait you would stop and wait if it's a pedestrian crossing uh, not crossing you can keep on driving thank you for this i got so confused with these cassie that's because nobody had explained it to you and now i have but just take your time when you're answering questions take your time to think puff in puff puff intelligent intelligent same traffic light sequence pelican different traffic light sequence cool so at a puffin crossing which color follows the green signal is it flashing amber steady red Flashing green or steady amber. Let's get rid of steady red and flashing green. You know it's not that. You know the way to have uh, understand the difference between which crossing has flashing amber and which one has steady amber. So which of these is the answer at a puffin crossing? At a puffin crossing, is it flashing amber or is it steady amber? Pop your answer in. If I've helped you, double tap the screen. Keep double tapping the screen. Give me loads and loads and loads of likes. That would be really amazing to see. Okay, so, you, so let me just recap. For those of you who just joined, let me just recap. A puffin crossing is the intelligent crossing with exactly the same sequence as normal traffic lights. Red, red and amber, green, amber, red. A pelican crossing has the flashing amber phase. Red, flashing amber, green, amber, red. So the right answer there is steady amber. Did you get it right? Did you get it right? Let me know. A pelican crossing has the flashing amber. A puffin crossing has the steady amber. Awesome. That's my crossings made simple. I've included crossings made simple because people, I could help you. I could help you this morning to learn the traffic light sequence. I could help you this morning to learn what all the colours mean because people think these two mean get ready or prepare and they don't. The sequence is, say it with me, red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Someone's asking me, I'm doing it again. Red, red and amber, green, amber, red. 
one more time. Red, red and amber, green, amber, red. I know it's repetitive and if you know it, it might be a bit boring and tedious to watch, but as soon as you've got it, then it's you can answer so many questions and that's why I want to go through it. That's why I'm making a fool of myself by going through it time and time and time again. Um, the, the theory test pass rate is really low. The official government figures are the pass rate is 47%. Um, you need help with the colour studs. I will cover those tomorrow. Oh, not one more time. People will start shouting at me. Pull, you, pull, you, pull, pull your pants down. They'll start shouting at me. One more time. Red, red and amber. Green, amber, red. Red, red and amber. Green, amber, red. Say it to yourself. Red, red and amber. Green, amber, red. Say it to yourself. Red, red and amber. Green, amber, red. Cool. The pass rate, the fail rate is 53%. People are failing for all kinds of reasons. It's not because you can't learn. It's because the, the way you're learning, red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Awesome. It's not because you can't learn. It's not necessarily because you've got learning difficulties or you have dyslexia or English isn't your first language. It's for all kinds of reasons and going through questions and memorising answers is not the way to learn. Some people that say the past um, easily, they might have got really simple, much more simple questions, ones that they could, and they've guessed at some answers as well, because you can guess. Um, they might have got lucky, especially people that just scrape a pass. OK, getting a good pass, 47, 48, 49, 50 means you have uh, means you, you have a lot, a lot more knowledge. OK, um, it's frustrating. It's embarrassing to tell people again and again and again that I failed can be so embarrassing for some people. And I don't like hearing that. I don't like hearing that you're embarrassing, that you're embarrassed or that your family are saying, um, making comments about you not passing when your brothers and sisters or your, your friends have done. You need to score 43 out of 50 to pass. Um, and you can't book your driving test until you pass your theory test. And that is really frustrating in itself. I know there'll be people on here that are ready for their theory, their driving test, but they can't pass the theory test. Is that right? Let me know. Are you one of the people? And I'll show you, I'll show you this um, email that I received. It said, hey, Annie, I passed today after I purchased your theory test course a week ago. I wish I could speak to you directly. After trying to pass for over 10 years, I passed within just a week of learning with you. And that is the email right there. After trying to pass for over 10 years. Um, and that's what I want to do. Some people, they can do it. You just need some help. You just need teaching. And um, um, you just need teaching to pass your theory test. And that's what, yeah, lots and lots of people, I can do it. I could drive, I could pass my driving test, I just can't pass my theory test. So I created the course to help you to pass. I put all kinds of stuff in it. I spent years dis um, finding out what you struggle with. I spent years, uh, thousands of hours, sorry, designing techniques and explanations to help you learn, to help you easily remember, to break it down for you. Um, Thank you, Shim Shimmer. You will be 100% prepared to pass when you go all the way through it. It's helped over 5,000 people to pass so far. It's helping more and more people pass every single day. Will you go over Crossroads at all? I do not have a Crossroads lesson prepared. And Butterfly, Solsky, what particular thing are you struggling with with Crossroads? Did you ask me this yesterday? So I get emails, messages um, every single day asking, can I do this? Can I do that? It's all in my course, though. It is all in this course. Um, but what particular thing are you struggling with? Or what particular thing about Crossroads? Let me know. The course is £34.99. You can click on this link. Let me show you what's in it. Let me show you what's in the theory test course and how you'll go through it to guarantee you're 100% test ready. Go to the introduction first, so you've got a really good understanding of what's expected in the theory test and how to go through the course. There are 14 different theory test topics. Let me show you what's in the accidents topic. You can download and print off a worksheet to fill in if you want to. You can fill it in while you're watching the video tutorials. Then you can listen to a fact list before you go and have a go at all of the official DVSA practice questions for that topic. When you've got all of the questions correct, have a go at the mock test for that topic. And when you get 10 out of 10 in the mock test, 
move on to the next topic and go through all of the topics in the same way so that by the time you get to the case studies and the full mock tests, you'll find answering the questions easy. If you suffer from anxiety, I'll, I'll, I'll give a bit of a talk about um, um, crossroads in a second. Uh, if you suffer from anxiety, I have techniques to help you get rid of anxiety in the course. If you suffer, if, if you um, struggle with your hazard perception, I have got hazard perception tips to how to score well um, in the course. I've got techniques to help you answer any multiple choice question. A five step technique is in the course. Free bonuses are a whole course on hazard perception, a whole course on hypnosis. Um, so a track for you to listen to, to take away your anxiety, to help you to go to your test, feeling calm, feeling confident, feeling relaxed. Top 10 reasons for failure ebook, top 20 hardest theory test questions ebook. Free bonus is worth $34.95. You pay once for the course, you use it for as long as you need. Um, is there a single person here who doesn't suffer from anxiety? Is there anybody who doesn't suffer from some kind of anxiety? You will very quickly see and hear how you're going to pass your theory test. These people have, um, let's go through this one here. This is, um, is this, um, Hey Annie, I thank you, thank you for your support with your TikTok lives and the course. I passed today on the 23rd of February. The course is amazing and really does help guide you through everything. Uh, everything in the course was helpful, okay? Um, and that was Scott who sent me that this morning or last night. Um, Amy sent this, I, I, you probably won't see this, but I want to thank you because your lives um, videos helped me to pass today and I'm really really grateful isn't that awesome okay so and ask Annie someone's asked me about um, crossroads and a question you get asked in crossroads is how is it safer to turn right is that what you're asking me about turning right at crossroads let me know and i'll try and offer a little bit of help but i might try and write a lesson this weekend um but i do have to have some weekends off but I'll, i might try and write a lesson on crossroads this weekend to help let me know is it about turning right at crossroads is that what it is or is that not what it is because i think that's what they ask you I think that's all they ask you about crossroads. So if you're driving, um, first of all, when you're driving a car, when you're driving a car, the driver's side, the other word for the driver's side is the off side. Remember this, there's the off side and the near side. The near side of a car is the side that's near the curb. That's how I remember it. How do you remember it? Or would that help you to remember? Or do you already know? Do you already know? The near side of a car is the side that's near the curb. The off side is the driver's side. Does that help you at all? Let me know, guys. Let me know, because I'm just seeing a silly comment. None of this is true. There's 280 people on there I'm trying to help. So if you want help, then please answer me. Or I'm just going to go now because it's 25 to 12 and I'm finishing. So if I don't see any comments and I can just see silliness, then I will finish because it's time for me to finish. Okay, right, so I'm, so I'm, I'm going to get going now um, because I'm not having enough comments coming through. You obviously had enough for today. That's awesome. Okay, so let me get going. The I'll just um, I'll just skim through the couple of exercises and tell you when I'm next on. Um, my course is thirty four ninety nine. If you want to sign up, then you can click on this link. If you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, then click on this link as well. My name is Annie. I'm helping you to pass your theory test um, with this course. Let me just come on to um, this review from somebody who did my course that the, the past using my course. This is a huge thank you to you as your online course and TikToks helped me thoroughly. That's a five star review from Cimarron. Uh, my next live, I'll be live at 6.30 tonight. Um, 
and we'll be going through questions questions and answers that I put onto the slides. I'll get a chance to make some slides today to help you. I'll be back live again tomorrow morning where I'll be delivering a lesson for you. I need you to comment and, and, let, and let me know so we can get rid of, of silly comments. Um, but I need I always need comments straight away. But um, so I'm, I'm supposed to finish at half past 11. So I'm going to get going now. I'll be back on tomorrow and... Um, Oh, thank you, James. Thank you. It's fine. It's, it's fine. A couple of people being silly is fine. But if you want, if you need, and I need to know I'm not just talking to myself. Um, so if I'm not talking to myself, then I need 200 people or at least some of you to say yes or no or, or some kind of help. I will be live at four. I've got, I've got a hair appointment at four o'clock. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, thank you. NKBBB. That's awesome. I'll be live at 6.30, Phoe, tonight. Okay. Uh, is that how you say your, is that how you say your name? And sometimes, um, the person that's asked the particular questions have to go because you can't always you can't always stay can you all the whole time that i'm on uh see you tonight guys thank you so much for joining me let me leave with some likes that'll be awesome double tap the screen give me some likes that'll be awesome uh thank you mushroom thank you guys i'll see you tomorrow see you tonight at 6 30 or tomorrow morning at um nine o'clock in that one more time for somebody who's asking bye thank you for all the hearts fly up the screen really appreciate it